broadcast. Hello. We have been having a great time <laughs> trying to get ready for the broadcast. This is, oh, my head, the, our third time trying to do We're this broadcast. Here. And every time we try and do it, something happens. Our AC broke, which shout out $11,000 for a new AC if you want to help us out. There's your little offering spiel. <laughs> our AC broke in the studio. So we have right now a window AC. So if I'm looking like a glazed donut, a fresh glazed donut from Krispy Kreme sweating is because we're using, <laughs> it's because we're using, it's a little delayed over there in the laugh factory. We're using a window, window. unit right now and we mm. have like these barriers up and we have fans blowing. So you're gonna hear like hissing and buzzing and all of that, it doesn't matter. I told you guys we're gonna go live this week. We'll use a Nokia phone. We'll play Snake while we're live if we have to <laughs> because we have to go live. And so super excited. We have Alyssa back on. It is not easy. She's the hardest guest to get on. <laughs> it's like I could get any preacher, any celebrity person, but getting her on it's, is not easy. We yeah. have four kids that we try to keep alive and it takes a lot of time <laughs> and a lot of work. And so I'm super excited to have her on again tonight. We're gonna be doing Q&A. This is super relaxed. I know she's very anxious right now but we're gonna be doing super relaxed Q&A. We've already received, I think last week we had like almost 400 questions I went through. Guys, okay, here's the thing. Episode 143 of the podcast, let me just say this. All the questions you guys sent in, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna cover them. I compiled them and made them more general because you guys were asking like crazy specific questions. So please save your questions. If we have time at the end, we'll do a ask us anything. But if you missed the memo, we've already taken hundreds of questions and compiled them into like 30 or 40. So don't spam questions in the chat, just, have fun in the chat, talk to us. We are reading the chats in front of our face on a big screen, but uh, yeah, just so you guys know, the question stuff, we've already gotten all the questions that we're going to be bringing in, and if we have time at the end, then we will be answering your live questions, but if you're frustrated by that, I promise we're gonna get to your question <laughs> because a lot of people ask the same questions, and there's several thousand people on here, and whenever several thousand people are typing questions at once, the program we're using to read the chat freezes. Like they literally can't keep up with like thousands of people typing at one time, the servers just freeze. So I can't do like ask us live right now because it'll just be spammed and yeah. it'll freeze the chat and then we have to wait and it takes five minutes to catch up. So it's better that I last week had you guys send in your questions on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube and then we compiled them. So just relax, get some coffee, get some tea. We're on episode 143. You guys are getting two podcasts this week. We did our Tuesday podcast and we're doing today's podcast. A couple things before we get started. And yes, Alyssa will be talking tonight. You're like, are you gonna let her talk? <laughs> we're gonna do that. If you could zoom in, Nico, and crop her, that'd be good because I'm I'm like chest up. We're gonna work on it as we go here. Um, but yes, do me a huge favor, guys. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share. Make sure you send this to somebody. Do all the good stuff that we tell you guys to do every single time. That's gonna help us out. That looks much better. Thank you, Nico. We're doing this live here. That's gonna help us out tremendously. You can partner, the links to give will be on screen. Oh, I just remembered. Oh, no, no, it'll work. Okay, anyways, the links to give are gonna be in the description and in the comments. And so you guys can give, you can partner with us. Again, we're buying $11,000 AC on Wednesday for the studio. It's always, feels like every it's week we have something. A, always something coming up, a new expense. So you can help us out with the new unit and whatever else uh, on the links to give are down below or in the description that helps us out tremendously. We have a partner's call coming soon, we'll announce. We have a second channel that's linked down below in the description. Make sure you check out, it's Isaiah Saldivar Clips. We're uploading all the time on there. It helps us out tremendously if you watch. A couple new dates, I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna steal the mic, uh, the mouse real quick. A couple new dates is July 15th, I'll be in New Jersey at V1 Church for the Breakers Conference. September 24th, I'll be in Arizona at Without Walls Church, okay? So those are your dates. Those are all the announcements. That's everything going on tonight. We're here finally after three times of re- or how do we say it? Changing the date? Rescheduling. 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 I was going to say rain check, but this isn't Save Martin 1995. Um, rescheduling. So do me a favor, guys. Uh, make sure you're engaging in the chat. We will be reading the chat. Share the broadcast as it grows. We'll be answering tons of questions, having fun. This is laid back. Now, some of you are going to be in the chat saying, Isaiah, I want you to preach. Okay. Let me talk to you guys. This is not night. This is not preach night. I will be preaching a little bit, but I have a sermon I just posted on Monday. We have a podcast we post on Tuesday. I have 1,400 videos. Many of those are preaching videos and teaching videos. Please, please don't be in the chat spamming. Are you gonna preach? Are you gonna talk? Uh, we're just hanging out doing Q&A, talking about what God has done in our life and just talking. This is a Q&A. You can see the human side of us. We are real people. So please do me a huge favor and don't. Someone said the camera looks crispier than a lace potato chips. Thank you, Kate Robin. <laughs> so guys, we're gonna have fun tonight. Please don't. <laughs> 
spam. Oh, you're gonna preach. I'm here to hear preaching because I have 1,400 other videos you can watch. And then also, we're, we're gonna do the newlyweds game where we try to answer, but it didn't work out. We had some technical difficulties and some stuff I forgot I was supposed to bring. I didn't bring, but we're gonna do a separate video <laughs> having fun doing that on another day. So, all right. Now, first, before we start, I want to ask Alyssa a very que special question. She doesn't know I'm going to ask her. What are just you to ask? make sure that we won't record yet, Nico. Just to make sure that we're all on I'm the same scared. page before we get started tonight, okay? It's not, she's not pregnant. We're oh, done. Like, we what are we you are officially ask? announcing that we are we love our four kids. It's complete. We're done having kids. We are I've been happy. waiting for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to harass her tonight, being like, when are we having more kids? Are you pregnant? She's not pregnant. But I do want to ask her, okay? Very important question. I don't have, she doesn't know I'm going to ask her this. This is on the spot. This is gonna help with her anxiety. This is not gonna help. You're making it worse. <laughs> okay. Do I let you talk on the podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at, a, at any moment. Yes, I can say whatever I want whenever I want. So, do you feel yes. like there's ever a time where you can't just speak no. and talk on no. here? No. I choose not to. Okay. So, you want me to <laughs> it talk? Is my you choice. want me to talk more so that you can talk less? Yes. Okay. I just wanna make sure because you guys are be like, Isaiah, let her talk. You're talking the whole time. Just so we could all be on the same page and have fun tonight and talk and stuff. I talk for a living. I live stream for a living. I live stream thousands of hours per year. Alyssa live streams like two or three hours per year. So just remember, guys, <laughs> just remember it's nerve wracking for her. And it's, 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 you know, ex she's extremely anxious doing these lives. Be patient with us. If I'm talking more, it's because this is literally what I do, and she's done this like three times in her life. I'm doing this to be nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we're here to hang out with you guys, to talk with you guys, to have fun. She comes on once every few months. So don't leave comments like, oh, Isaiah didn't let her talk. She doesn't talk enough. She's going to talk as much as she wants to talk, which leads us to our first question. We'll start recording here. Episode 140. I don't know. Three of the Revival Lifestyle Podcast. I just scrolled <laughs> to my notes. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Um, let's talk about this. So first of all, Alyssa just got done. I just want to honor you in this, doing reading the whole Bible in 100 days. 99. 99 yeah, days. Yeah. Did you know 99 used did you know 99 used to be my favorite number growing up? I didn't know. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I've never told you that. Anyways, I don't know why growing up my favorite number was 99. That's so random. But you just got done reading the entire Bible in 99 days. Tell us a little Ooh. bit about that. That was a massive accomplishment. I just want it to honor huge, you on that. Yeah. We have four children. Alyssa's extremely busy, as you can imagine, with four kids. And she's a stay at home mom, taking care of the house and cleaning and cooking, doing all that stuff. It's extremely busy. And she's always struggled to get yeah. through the Old Testament. And this was like a major breakthrough for her. She's actually saying she might be doing it again with a bunch of you guys somehow. We'll talk about that maybe later. <laughs> but talk to us a little bit about reading the Bible 99 days, what that meant to you, how you did that, because that's a massive accomplishment. Yeah. You were reading for literally hours a day. So let's talk about that a little bit. It was it was huge. Do you remember me crying all the time to you? Yes. I would literally attempt to- And then you'd say, don't preach to me when yeah. I was trying to- I would attempt to open the Old Testament. I don't know what it was. And I would literally sit there and I would just cry and cry and I couldn't get through it. I come in, I'd be like, I'm, I'm not a good Christian. I can't read the Old Testament. And he would literally start preaching to me. So then I'd get mad and I'd walk away and I'm like, you don't understand. I'm like, you gotta lock yourself in your office and just read for hours on end. So um, I finally got to a place where I just wanted to prove to myself that I could actually do it. So I started a plan. I honestly, in the beginning, didn't even think I would finish it, but I started the plan. It was a hundred days and Finally, I just kept every single day, no matter what. I'm like, I have to read. I have to read. I have to read. Waking up early before the kids. I would wake up early. I would lay. I bought a little um, light. The a little, little neck light. He makes so much fun. I of love me. it. She went straight grandma style with the neck light. <laughs> I would come in the room and she'd have. I'm like, what is that? A UFO around your neck? It was like a little circle neck light. It would yeah. light up her. Well, the Go kids ahead, they would like they would be it. sleeping. And so I'm like, well, if they're going to fall asleep at like 930 or something, I'm like, I could read for another couple hours or something. So and then I would just sit there and just read and read and read. And yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. It was so, amazing. Yeah. The fact that she was using a neck light. I know I joke and make yeah. fun. It's all in fun, though, but was a testament to her being able to fit in Bible reading in her everyday yeah, life. Yeah, Being super busy. Mm -hmm. One thing I know that's always been a battle for both of us is having kids being like super, super radical. Oh, what did I do? Sorry, Nico. Did something. Um, being super, super radical before we had kids and we were like 24 hours, prayer meetings, revival meetings, yeah. nonstop, always at the church. Like we literally lived in a prayer meeting before we had kids. 
And then, as many of you know, you have kids, and then your kids start getting older, and it's like, okay, you have to start taking Aww. care of your kids. And so I bought a necklace because that's awesome. I know that. And so you know, it is it is a challenge with kids, yeah. and there's a lot of you women watching that are like, man, I can't read my Bible. I, I'm not a good Christian, and a lot of women, I think, st especially stay at home moms struggle with insecurity of I'm not a good enough Christian. God's yeah. mad at me because I don't read my Bible. I don't pray. When in reality, that's not at all how God, that's not how God works. God understands that we're all in a different season. If I'm for full time, like all I do is read and pray and get ready and do these lives. Like that's what yeah, I do as full time. <laughs> and she's a full time, you know, stay at home mom has all these responsibilities. Obviously, I'm going to be reading the Bible more. I'm going to be praying more. Yeah. I'm going to be preaching. So sometimes it's easy to compare ourselves to to me or her compare herself to me and be like, I'm not radical like you because I'm not doing yeah, X, Y, and Z. because our life, it looks different. Yeah, but in reality, her calling, and I want to say this to some of you ladies, like your calling is to raise your kids. Your, your mm -hmm. discipling the nations is your children pouring into them. So you're not less than because you're not traveling the world or have a huge YouTube channel or discipling everybody, but you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. And sadly, I'm not trying to get off on a preach here, but we've demonized stay at home moms. We've made them less than, and we're like, go get yeah. a career and go get it. And you know, feminism, which is a lot of it's demonic, but feminism mm -hmm. says like, if you're not leading, if you're not the breadwinner, if you're not going out and getting a job and having this high paying career, then mm -hmm. you're, you have no value. Your value is tied to how, how high you can climb the ladder of corporate America. Yeah. But in the Bible, the role of the woman was to support the husband, to be home with the kids, to be fruitful, to multiply, praise the Lord, to um, <laughs> hold down the fort, to tend to that garden. And a lot of women have reversed that. It's the devil's agenda to get you women out of the house to go make, oh, I'm preaching strong. I was like, are you going to keep going? We haven't read the first question. I just can't believe it's like you make $25 an hour and you pay a babysitter yeah. $15 an hour. So you're paying somebody, you're making $10 an hour after you pay a babysitter for someone you barely know to raise your kids. Mm -hmm. And then you come home and your kids don't even want to talk to you because they don't even know you because you've been yeah. at work all day to pay a babysitter. Sad. And I know some people yeah. are in positions where there's no choice, but my point is don't let society tell you that if you're a stay-at-home mom, you have no value and yeah. you're worthless because that's a demonic lie, like your calling, your assignment is. And so I'm super proud of you for doing that, Thank reading you. the Bible in 100 days, It's a, or 99 days, sorry, not 100. Yeah, 99. Two digits, <laughs> not three digits. It's a major accomplishment and it's just a challenge to every. I, yeah, I think there. even like I would read the Bible, but I would just like do the old, the New Testament and then I would journal and I would, you know, towards the end of the year, I would only have like maybe a few verses and it never was like where I actually pushed myself and like actually yeah. read a lot. I would just read a couple verses. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think even just actually pushing myself to like not sit there and journal every because if yeah. you read that plan, it, it can't be just like a whole thing of journaling. Like it's just actually reading, actually getting like God's word in you. And that was one of the biggest things for me because I, I had to put kind of like what I really wanted on the side and just focus in on like, okay, this is what I have to do regardless of anything. And it made me bring my Bible everywhere. Yeah. Because when I would sit in the car and wait for the kids at school or... Imagine bringing your Bible everywhere I was instead of your phone. I was That's bringing crazy. it everywhere. I mean, people could do it on their phone, yeah, but... Yeah. But the actual physical Bible Yeah, I was makes bringing you... it. And like every minute I had, I would just open it up and I'd have to catch up and I'd have to read. And it was amazing. Yeah. So she might maybe I'm do thinking, it again. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing it again with girls or moms or whoever wants to. Because when I posted that video, like the little video I made... I had so many people message me about how they want to do it or encourage them or they don't, you know, I did it alone and it was, it was pretty hard to do it alone. So I'm like, I mean, I would have like my sister-in-laws like encouraging me like, keep going. Like, did you read today? But, um, I'm trying to figure out how to do it, but I really want to do it with a bunch of people. That's good. I'm trying to remember how many hours it's supposed to take to read. I thought it was 60, but I think I'm off. I think that's if you read. Anyways, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of time it's a investment. Lot. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a lot of time investment. So, but it's amazing. And spiritually, you'll never do better. It's life changing. It's life changing. And it's, I can tell a difference in you. It's radically changed your life. It's changed our family's life. And so we're just going to keep down that path. And, and the kids. Sorry. It did. It changed the kids. Yeah. Even like I brought up my Bible again, like yesterday and Harvey just walked in and she's like, oh, you're reading your Bible again and you're doing this. And they would always, oh, mom, you're going to read your Bible today. And 
they were just always wanting to be around it and talking about it. And it, it just became so normal to them that it was cool to see. Yeah. And that's things that they're going to remember growing yeah, up. Like I, I, I have vivid memories of times where my parents would be praying. I've shared this before. It's like you have core memories of your parents, whether they're praying or reading. And I remember even before I was saved, maybe a year before my dad was getting into like reading his Bible and he was like teaching this men's group kind of thing and, and sharing and stuff like that at the church. And I, it, this weird part of me, this is so weird because I can't explain it, but in deep down in me, something was like, if my dad's praying and reading, I feel like I should probably try to get involved, which was like so weird because me and my dad weren't really connected because I was out doing my own thing. But it's just the the par parents have so much power over their children. And if your kids see you praying and seeing you reading, yeah. it does, it's it's profound. It yeah. is profound. They'll, it's something they'll never forget. And that's something I am need to do better at because I read and study in my office. I'm like, oh, I got to be more intentional. I've said this for years and I, I just actually have to apply it. But I'm like, I got to be more, more intentional with reading in front of the kids, yeah. praying in front of the kids, because I'm for the last 12 years, I've been used to just like studying in my office because it's I need to get in the quiet place. I need to get here from God. But yeah, I need to be more intentional about that. All right, we're going to get into some of the Q&A. We have so many questions. I just realized I haven't even seen these questions. We haven't even started. We haven't. OK, so she hasn't seen these. I briefly saw them. We don't have like preparation. I think I have wrote down like one or two verses to prepare on some of these questions. But uh, there's a lot to go over. I thought I always like to over plan and under plan for the content. So we have a lot of questions to go over. We'll go over them as best we can. We won't go super long in each one. We might not. I mean, I should tell myself that. But the first <laughs> question is, how did you guys meet? So. Before I give my side and you tell everybody how I tricked you to get your phone number, <laughs> you give your side of how we met and then I'll give my side, but I'll, I'll give you the chance to answer first. Uh, I just got invited to a prayer meeting. And so I went to the prayer meeting and you were preaching. Yeah, what did you think what? though? Give us more detail. You I mean, I <laughs> what'd you think? <laughs> what'd you think the, of the spaghetti arms? <clears throat> Uh, I'm just kidding about that. But seriously, what did oh. you think when you went? I'm just joking. You don't have to answer my jokes, by oh. the way. It's just, I was just for the chat. I was Content. more confused about everything else than about you preaching. I mean, you were screaming at me, and I didn't know what you were saying. But well, I mean, I wasn't screaming at you. I was kind of just screaming <laughs> at, at the, the crowd. whole crowd. And, they, and we were in a house, too. But yeah. your friend invited you. We need more detail. Yeah. My friend invited me. So I show up, listen to you preach and everything. Um, I was about to leave, and then the people prayed for me, and, you know, I got saved. That night? That night. And then you wanted to come and back. And then I was best friend. Then Cherish became my best friend. Which is my sister. Is his but sister. But you, you fast forwarded a little bit because oh. then you wanted to come back, but you didn't want her to really know. So you're like, oh, are you going back to that thing? Oh, we're doing the back. whole Well, I mean, we're just going over again? how we met. How did you end up at the awakening? How did you, yeah. what, how long was it after your, I was saved? Like Yeah, and then I just started coming back. So I would ask her, hey, you know, is there a that prayer thing again? And um, she's like, yeah, it's this day and this day. So then I would show up and yeah. And then I, how did I ask for your phone number again? I don't remember. <laughs> this story, probably... I'm going to explain myself after you explain what happened. You're going to explain the whole group prayer thing. Yes, yes, yeah. go ahead. But you tell them, you tell them. Okay. She has her testimony, guys, on the yeah, channel Yeah, we have as well, all this. So, but go ahead. But, but there's new people. There's like oh, a bunch of new people. So you have to repeat sometimes. Um, so me and Cherish were friends. His sister, his little sister. We were, <laughs> we were friends, I don't know, it was probably like a month or two into it. And she would invite me to prayer and I'd still hang out with her and stuff. And then I was leaving one of the night prayers and you came up to me. And the leader of the group came the up to leader. you, the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're like, hey, <laughs> I can't. You're going to make me laugh again. Hey, um, are your palms I want to get right yeah. Now? They're like I want to get your number because um you know to like tell you about prayer meetings and like keep you updated <laughs> and things that like is, that. Is <laughs> not. So I gave I you my not number. A Rizzler. Okay. There. Mind you, now let me be clear now that she gave her side. I did not trick her to get her number. I had I kid you not. Uh -huh. I had a So first of all, Did you get everybody's number like yes, that? Yes, yes, I did. Mm, I was, was just saved. <laughs> and I was getting, I was, okay, so I had a, a large contact list because we were, you know, partying and doing all that and in a band. So I had a lot of contacts from people. I was the guy that got radically saved and spam every single contact. I'm not kidding. I have this app where it let you put like your whole contact list into like these big groups. Because back in the day, there was no iMessage group. It was just 
20 group texts. You could send like 20 texts at a time to group and it was like super toxic because people couldn't leave them. And so what I was doing was, this is bad, don't do this. I was getting, <laughs> I had this app where you could make your whole contacts list into huge groups. And I kid you not, I was sending out my entire contacts list, 20 person each group messages. Like my phone, I would send these texts and my phone would get so hot because it was, <laughs> it was trying to send like hundreds of texts at once. And my phone would be like frying in my, in my pocket. So Isaiah Rizavar. Okay, so I was sending, I was sending, hold on, listen guys, listen. I was sending out these, my whole list group texts and people were so mad. They were like, F off. What are you texting me for? Like all my friends were cussing me out because I was grouping them. Hindsight, I'm like, I probably wouldn't have done it that way again, but I was super, super radical at the time. I mean, I still am, but I'm not, I guess I'm not as radical as I would send my entire context. But I wanted everybody safe, so I was texting one. So when people were coming to the revival meeting, I kid you not, when you came to the revival, you, we got your name and number. We had like a list. We were getting everyone's name and number. And I would group text every single, I was doing it. We didn't have like an assistant or system. I would group text every single person. Yeah, you would. Every single week. Hey, you got to come to prayer. Hey, have, did you get saved? I was texting people for like everybody. So when I got her number, I was legitimately asking for her number because I was putting her in the group text. Truthfully, I was, was it just legitimately? It was that? legitimately. Yeah, okay. 100%. No, that's, I would never, I would never try to get people's numbers trying to get in a prayer meeting. And you already know I wasn't, I was, the time that I started, I was like, I'm that's never getting married. Not. I never had feelings for anyone yeah. but her. You were Literally, anti-girls. I was anti-girls. I was like, girls, stay He's away from that. me. You're all Jezebels. Get away from me. <laughs> I thought everyone was trying to cut my hair and, and take my strength. So I was trying to stay he away did. from every girl. I was literally preaching like, none of us are going to be, God doesn't want no one married. It's a waste of time, Paul said. Yeah. I was, he was super. <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't rizzing anybody up. I was completely against all of it until God changed my heart and mm -hmm. all that. And like a year and a half after the revival started, we got married. We got engaged. We were engaged for three months. We didn't date. We literally got engaged for three months, and two then months. we got married. Two and a half months. Two, yeah. Yeah, two and a half months. July 17th to September 15th. And she's not pregnant, guys, for those of you asking. So what was it? July what? July 17th, we, you proposed, and we got married uh, September 15th. Okay, so we were engaged for two and a half months. We didn't date none of that. It was all us in a group setting. And then we got married, and we've been happily married. We'll be celebrating 11 years this year. Yay, what a great Yay! story of how we met. <laughs> So that's how we met. So in a nutshell, she came to the revival. Her friend brought her, uh -huh. and I um, stayed. She's like, "Wow, this guy is a great speaker. I <laughs> wow. want to get to know this guy. This guy's gonna be my husband." And she stayed. Can I? Can I do say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. Over time, what I really started to like about you was you were so nice and genuine. That's nice of you. No, seriously. Am I still nice and genuine? Yeah, of course. You still are to this day. What about for all the people that don't like me? Do you think I'm genuine you're, and nice? Yeah, you're so nice. We Everybody that you meet, everybody you make oh, feel so comfortable, nice. you're just really nice to everybody. I legitimately like people. I know. He's just so, like, he's so nice to every single person. Oh, you're making me blush now. Okay. And it was, that was a big, that was a big so that's thing. what made her like me. So you guys are like, what? why'd you like him? That's why. It wasn't the biceps. I know you guys are like, it must have been the biceps. It, it wasn't. It was just always nice to everybody. Someone said, I remember in one video, you, you guys said you got married as soon as you had feelings for her. Were you guys not scared to rush into it? What made you both know this is what you wanted forever? So let's see. Were you not scared to rush into it? I mean, we kind of did because we were engaged for two scared. and a half months. Why weren't you scared? I feel like because I knew, I knew enough about you just hanging out with, you know, around your family and everything. I loved your family. I knew that you were nice and considerate and godly. godly and Preaching machine. I'm yeah. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> so I wasn't I wasn't rushed ever. I mean I wasn't scared. And for me, I share this in our full testimonies so you guys. I won't re really tell the story because we have so many questions. Is I had an audible Yeah. It wasn't audible in the sense where it was from the outside in, but I had clear as you could possibly get in Bible college. We were actually in Bible college together and I had an audible confirmation of Alyssa is your wife. So regardless of like feelings or not, or this or that, or whatever it was, I had an audible uh, confformation. And and don't, that, that's I think an exception, not the rule. So don't be like, yeah. oh, God didn't speak to me audibly. I'm not getting married. He I didn't think, speak to me audibly. Yeah, yeah, he didn't speak to her audibly. So I had an encounter with God. I was like, Lord, is this basically the one? And then I, yeah, I was at a Bible college. I, I share the whole story and God audibly spoke, said this is your wife. And so I didn't care what happened, what, 
whatever i knew that this was going to be my wife and this is what god said and i didn't use that like as hey god spoke to me you're going to be my wife he didn't it even wasn't, tell me yeah it wasn't like none of that it was she had feelings i had feelings we both went to our pastor and mm -hmm. our pastor's like let's pray let's fast let's do premarital counseling one thing we used to do was like don't talk for a few weeks see if the feelings are still there maybe mm -hmm. it's just emotional maybe it's just whatever so take time off like don't be talking don't be texting don't be none of that take time off to pray and fast which we honored and did that I and mean, then we went to premarital counseling and here yeah. we are 11 years celebrate about to celebrate 11 years okay how do you balance not being of the world but at the same time being in the world if that makes sense that's a good question uh how do you balance not being of the world but at the same time being in the world if that makes sense I mean, in my opinion, you just keep living a life of holiness, yeah. consecration, honesty. You live consecrated, separate, but you're not, like I've always taught, you're not walking around afraid of everything, afraid of going to Walmart, afraid of going to Starbucks, afraid of drinking water because of the brand Aquafina, they have this in this country. Like we don't yeah. walk around afraid of everyone and everything because we're Christians. We are the light in the darkness. So if we're not out in the darkness, in the culture, reaching people on the platforms like tonight, we're on a platform that celebrates extremely dark things, but we're here showing the light. So it's being the light in the world and not hiding from the world and being afraid of shining our light. So I don't know. How do you not, how do you balance not being yeah, of the world? Yeah, that's a hard question because. It's kind of, too, it's kind yeah, of very general. I mean, we live holy, so we're still a part of the world, but like we don't listen to like worldly music. Yeah. Or like. There's a standard. Yeah. So living holy, living righteous, even in the midst of it. Okay. What is the hardest, most difficult part of marriage and ministry that you didn't expect? And how do you deal with it? Oh, these are hard questions. I'm like, you Yuck. chose these? I mean, I didn't, I just went through all of them and summarized them. I wasn't like picking, oh, I want to answer this one or else oh. I probably would put the hardest <laughs> questions right away. So what's the most difficult part of marriage and ministry that you didn't expect? Well, it's a little bit different now. Yeah. It's a little bit different now that you're not traveling because I think for me, the traveling probably would have been the most difficult part. Now that you're home, it's probably. I don't. Probably that it's like 24 seven in a sense. Yeah. Like it's not just like a nine to five. Yeah, I'm always having to be on my phone. I'm it's, always yeah. having to be responding. I'm always having to be checking things. I'm always going to be making flyers and editing, you know, well, you're, and Even if you're not and, doing it, your mind's doing it. Yeah. So it's hard to, to like, like shut Like the days down I that. stream, yeah. even like today, I'm trying to get stuff done, but my, my whole day is revolved around, because I don't stream until 6 p.m. So my whole day is thinking about the stream, thinking about what we're going to do, thinking about the content, thinking about preparing. It's yeah. like you can't you just can't be normal on the days so that's why i try not to always do every friday because i'm like the days i preach or the days i minister every pastor watching this knows what i'm talking about you're just in the zone and so mm -hmm. i think that's hard because i didn't realize like at, with kids and with marriage i'm very secluded in that world and then at the same time i'm like oh i still have to be a father and a husband even the yeah. days i'm preaching or the days i'm streaming so for me the most difficult part is trying to give you guys the attention and the affection you deserve while at the same time also sharing my life or like you sharing me with the world because there's yeah. a lot there's a high price to pay to try to stay in prayer to try to stay in the word to come up with content it, my life's different now than it was traveling and mind you guys for a decade i traveled like literally yeah. would leave thursday or friday get home monday have a meeting preach tuesday for our service leave thursday like mm -hmm. i was home a few days a month at, at that time and i was just traveling and preaching and pastoring and i was literally preaching sometimes yeah, like 12 yeah. to 15 times in a week like it was just we had a really crazy schedule for so many years but now it's been definitely a lot easier being home and being with the family and spending time with you guys. So yeah, that would be something that I didn't expect how time consuming ministry would be and how hard it would be to balance. Like I've always said, it's easy to be a good father. It's easy to be a good preacher and it's easy to be a good husband, but it's hard to be a good father, good preacher and a good husband. So they're all easy, but they're all hard if you put them together because yeah. we're all limited on time and all that. And, and I've pulled back a lot this year. I'm not doing like every day a fresh video. The last few years I've done a brand new video every single day. So I pulled back a lot and I will continue to pull back more as I see fit that my kids need me more yeah. and more time, more affection. But yeah, yeah and you, been hard. you know, taking breaks and stuff when we're like, okay, it's time to take a break and disconnect yeah. and get off for a week. Yeah, we just and... took 20 days off of streaming, which was really, really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Isaiah, in the beginning of your journey, when you were learning so much stuff, was there any setbacks you had or moments where you want to throw in the towel? If so, what kept you going? Yes. There was, this is going to sound kind of weird, but there was one moment 
when I had first gotten saved, maybe I'll save like three or four months. Probably the only time in my faith where I was like gonna throw in the towel was I'd heard some of my best friends in the world that I grew up with were like making fun of me, talking bad That's about sad. me. Yeah, like I was just, <laughs> I felt like I had no friends. I was a loser, a loner. Because I was saved, I, I felt like I lost all my like real friends I was in the world. And so someone was like, yeah, you should hear. I was at this party. I don't remember who it was, but someone told me they're like, I was I at a party. Know this. Yeah, and they were like, I've shared this before, but I'm gonna, sh you'll probably make sense in a second. And they're like, everyone was talking bad about you. Oh, you're this cult leader now and you're a Christian and you like these are people I grew up with and knew for like years or best yeah. friends of mine so I was I felt like I was like I'm done with God God how could you like I have no friends and I I told God I'm like I need you to speak to me if you don't speak to me and don't do this guys this was my early days I'll save a few months but I was like if you don't speak to me I'm going back to the world I'm going to the party I'm this I'm that I was just like really mad at God I guess and I said, I'm going to open my Bible. And I did one of those. I'm going to open my Bible, yeah. speak to me, which I don't recommend you guys doing that. Don't test oh. God and all that. I'm like, but I do it all will, the time. <laughs> he will answer. And so I opened my Bible and I have written down the verse. This is, guys, think about this. So I'm about, I, I wanted to quit. I wanted to be like, I'm done with God because all my friends are talking bad about me. I'm the laughing stock of the city. And I opened my Bible to this verse. Okay, so I'm only saved a few months. It's all fresh. I don't even know the Bible well. I haven't finished the Bible this portion of scripture, I I don't probably have never read at this point. First Peter 4.4. 4. Look at this. Okay. So remember the context. I'm about to quit. My friend's talking bad about me. First Peter 4.4. 4. I open my Bible. This is the first thing I read. Of I'm going to quote it word for word right now. Okay. So quote, start right here. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the wild flood of destructive things they do. So they slander you. But remember that they will have to face God who stands to judge everyone, both the living and the dead. So here I am, wow. a new Christian going, I don't want to be a Christian no more. All my friends are slandering me. I open up a book that's thousands of years old. And the first thing I read is Peter saying, of course, your former friends slander you when you don't plunge into the wild, destructive things they do. But they'll have to stand before God. So that rocked my life. After that, I was like, I'm never going to doubt God again. I'll never. And I've never had from that one point, which and it was probably just like a little emotional breakdown. Probably wasn't even real. <laughs> But from that one point, wanting well, to think, quit yeah. and throw in the towel. I think anybody would be kind of hurt hearing their friends. Yeah, it was just, it hit different. I was like, this is so weird. These are people I've known my whole yeah. life. And they, like my best friend since I was eight years old, that I was with every single day over here saying like, yeah, he's a cult leader. It was just so weird. Yeah. But anyways, a lot of them are saved now. They've apologized and repented and they're on fire for God. Praise the Lord. But that's where that's at. Okay, <laughs> Alyssa. Oh, this is a spicy one or a good one. What is your advice for a mom who struggles with having patience? Oh, Alyssa, gosh. do you struggle ever? Yes. Do I ever struggle? Yes. No, we're perfect parents. We never struggle with patience. We're always so patient with our kids. Uh, talk yeah. about our struggles no. with patience and any advice you have for moms. Uh, that's a hard one. First of all, do you struggle at all with that? Yes. You're not perfect like everybody no. thinks? Am I perfect like no. everyone thinks? There's 2,000 people You struggle on. with patience more than there's, I do. Hey! <laughs> there's, there, there's two. There's <laughs> It's true. <laughs> okay, talk to us. Talk. You went deep there. Okay, talk to us about struggling with patience. Are we are we perfect? Are we perfect? No, we're not. I already got some schools out. We're not even have to even ask her a joke. We are not perfect. Hold on. Um, our kids are loud all the time. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I zoomed. They talk a lot. Uh, they're not perfect kids. I think honestly. Just, they're kids, though. They're kids. They're amazing. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. Kids. But they still. Look at her adjusting the mic. I know. I felt you're her go be, down, and I was like, you're going to yell at me. <laughs> Have I ever yelled at you before? Yeah. No. Okay. Just to make sure, because he's going to yell at me, but I've never no, yelled at her in her life. But, anyways, sorry, go ahead. Patience. Um, I would say just walk away. Give yourself a, a second. Walk away. Don't yell at them. <laughs> if you have to cry, go cry. <laughs> Ladies. Or men, if you have to or cry. Or men. Um, but yeah, pray to God to help you every two seconds. That's what I do. I just start praying in tongues under I'm my like, breath. I'm like, Lord Jesus, like, I need help. Deep breath. <laughs> so guys, this is what we're trying to do tonight. We're trying to make you realize we're human and we're we have human. the same struggles. I don't even think I'm wearing matching socks right now. Yes, I am. No, we have the same struggles. And can we you show our shoes? We actually wore the same shoes. I can't get shoes. it that high. Hold on, hold on. 
Oh. Let's go. Yeah, that would be easier this. if you just turn the camera. There we go. We accidentally wore the same shoes. An accident. Oh. But it doesn't matter because we they're not in frame. But yes, we're wearing <laughs> the same vans, which is so random because I haven't worn these vans but once, and I put them on, and it was just random. But anyways, that wide angle looks kind of good there. I'm I know, not gonna I like lie. The wide angle. Anyways, okay. So walk away, pray. Walk away, pray. pray ask God to help cry, you. Cry. And just realize don't that don't throw a shoe at them. At the end of the day like their kids and they're not trying to get on your nerves. They're not trying to uh, be mean to you or all this. Like they probably just want attention or they're going through something and we're not understanding them. So I think just taking a second and getting away and then coming back and being like, okay, what's going on? And just talking like they're humans. Talk, pray, yeah. pray with them, pray with yourself, pray in tongues. If you can <laughs> pray in the spirit, start praying in tongues under your breath. That's what I do. When I start getting like irritated or I don't have patience or I'm on edge. It's an alarm. Yeah. It's my body's alarm that I'm not praying enough. You say that literally. all the time though. It is. It is. It is. Like an he'll alarm. get he'll get I'll literally tell her I'm like, I need to pray. He, he'll be like, I need to I need to pray. Like I think I need to go pray. I need to pray. So I don't blame it on the kids. Yeah. I don't blame it on Alyssa. I blame it on the fact that I'm I'm not praying enough. Because the Bible says mm -hmm. be anxious about nothing, but instead pray about everything. So if I'm anxious about something and not having patience is a, is a symptom of anxiety, like you're yeah. anxious, you're on edge, you're you're lashing out. It's to me, it's my body's alarm, or like I don't want to say my body, my spirit's alarm to be like you're not praying enough. Because yeah. how could you be prayed up, pray without ceasing, really that spirit filled, and then you're constantly struggling? And I'm not talking about over real issues. I'm talking over like all the kids are asking me a question at the same time. <laughs> They're, you know what I mean? Like that's I shouldn't be I shouldn't be irritated. I shouldn't be frustrated. So. I think for me, and I'm not using this as a cop out, it is challenging because I work for home. I yeah. work from home and like Nico here, my brother, he also works from home. You know, he works for the ministry full time. So we're trying to balance work, like full time work, like eight to 12 hours a day work mm -hmm. with also working at home. So if I'm in my office, I'll try to instead of being locked in my office for eight hours, I'll be like, okay, let me do some of my work on the couch on my phone. So like some of the studying I can do, the notes I can do, the responding, the emails, whatever work I have to do for the day, let me try to do it outside my office to spend, to at least be visible to the kids. But then I'm trying to work and they're asking me a million questions and I'm like, <laughs> I'm frustrated because I'm trying to get this done, but I can't. So I'm like, I'm just gonna go back to my office. So it's this whole thing. So it depends on your job. Some of you have a very stressful job. Some of you are in law enforcement. Your job is extremely stressful. Maybe you're a nurse in the ER. Your job is extremely mm -hmm. stressful. So the answer is, Prayer, seeking God, praying in the spirit, praying under your breath, asking God, giving your burdens to him, and mm -hmm. then just sometimes walking away. But yeah, we definitely, yeah. the one thing they don't tell you about kids is kids talk a lot. They They're talk so, so much. Our house, there's not a moment of silence ever. Like. When's ever. the last time our house was ever quiet? Oh, when never. they're sleeping, maybe? Yeah, never. And even then, they're coming <laughs> in our room in the middle of the night being like, I want to tell you a story. I'm like, it's 4 a.m. I don't want to hear a story. You can tell me a story in the morning. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, um, Journey came in at like three in the morning the other day and woke me up. And it takes me a long time to fall asleep once I wake up. And she's like, there's a spider in my bed. It keeps crawling on my face over and over, which I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, it's your blanket. So I go in her room and she has this blanket with all with these the tassels, tassels on the it's end. A blanket. And I'm it's right on her face. I'm like, the tassels, it's not a spider. <laughs> but I'm like, there's my 3 a.m. wake up. So yeah, we have the same issues you guys have, the same yeah. struggles. Our kids talk all the time. We love them. We appreciate them. But it does I also found sometimes. that if I actually get all my Bible reading and stuff done with them. Preach. No, if I get it done like before they wake up, I'm a lot less stressed out throughout the day. Cause I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, I've already got this. I'm done this. Like I have my, my Jesus, you know? So that's another thing too. And worship music. And you're spiritually nourished. You're yeah. you've ate. Guys, if you don't know what the term hangry is, where you're angry cause you're so hungry, it's a biological body's response to being hungry. Your body's saying, you need to eat something, right? Mm -hmm. Are you looking at me right now, Stevie? Cause you're hangry? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> being hangry is a real thing. Like you're, I know, I'm kidding. You're really, you nice really, the pregnant lady. you really get, you really get angry because you're hungry. Yeah. And so, so that's a real thing biologically. Like if you're hungry and you're angry, you're like, I don't know why I'm so angry at my kids. Well, it's because you never eat. But then the spiritual side is, and this is what I'm trying to say. I know I'm joking and being making light of it. I probably joke too much. But the spiritual side of it is, if you're not reading your Bible, you're spiritually hangry. Yeah. So it's now true. you're lashing out. Now you're angry at people. You don't know mm -hmm. why. It's because you're spiritually hangry. You haven't mm -hmm. ate. You haven't read your Bible. You haven't prayed. And there's times where I'm like, and I don't say it to be like facetious or to be spiritual, but I'll tell us like, I need to go pray. Like I'm lashing out because I haven't prayed today. Yeah. I haven't read today. And 
It's not their fault. It's my fault. I'm, I'm going to take responsibility and I'm not being spiritual right now. So hope you guys, after that 10 minute spiel, realize that we're not perfect and we have all the same struggles you have. So your advice is walk away, pray. Yeah. All that. Okay. Isaiah 18, your ministry really moves me. If you're going to go back and give your 19 year old self some advice, being successful oh. in the ministry, what would it be? Oh, these are the questions I can't just answer right away. I have to think about if I was going to give myself advice, well, 19 year old self. Uh, yeah. honestly it would be who cares what people think I, I think yeah. in my early yeah. days I would always worry about what is this pastor going to think what is this person going to think of my sermon this person doesn't like me what are they going to think about my ministry I'm at the point now in my life where like I literally the term I couldn't care less people I don't think people know what that term means it means that there's no less I can care about a certain <laughs> issue so I could not care any less about what people think about me but in my early days I spent a lot of time worried about what is so-and-so going to say? What is so-and-so going to think? What about blah, blah, blah. So don't worry about what people think. Serve God. Paul literally said it this way. If I cared about what people thought, I wouldn't be a bond servant. I wouldn't be a slave. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't even be a Christian. So if you're trying to be a Christian and please people, it's incompatible. You cannot be a Christian and try to please everybody because no matter what you do, someone will always dislike you. Right now, some of you like me, don't like me. If I talk too fast, you go, oh, you talk too fast. If I talk too slow, I talk too slow. If I don't talk fast enough, if I talk too slow, it, it, no matter what I say, yeah. what I do, what I post, if I do too much deliverance content, oh, you're talking too much about demons. If I don't do enough deliverance, oh, you're soft. You don't confront the demonic. No matter what you do, someone's going to have an opinion and you have to get to a place where the only opinion that matters is God's opinion. So that's all I care about. Okay. How do you manage full-time ministry with your wife and four daughters? Ever felt like you gave less time to one and... and to the, other. to the other uh the way i manage is i keep my priorities straight mm -hmm. my priorities are god number one my wife number two my children number three and my ministry is number four so you guys are my number four you'll always be my number four and my family will always be above my ministry do you feel like i've been yeah i've done that well yeah. or like do you feel like i've balanced that well and i think even or do you feel like i've neglected you guys for the ministry no and i think even the times where we know it's getting out of sync you're easy to just, oh yeah, I'll take a couple of days off or refocus. Which I've done that yeah. a few times recently. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna take a week off. I'm gonna take a month off. And of course it hurts growth. It hurts our finances, all that. All of that is inconsequential yeah, compared to our kids, our marriage, our family. If my marriage doesn't work, if my kids despise me, yet people in the green room love me or on the stage love me, then I have no business preaching. Like I have no business preaching if my marriage isn't right or if my kids aren't right. That's why the Bible says an elder has to be a man that's able to run his home. Like his, your home can't be just a ruckus and then you're out yeah. preaching the gospel. So I've said it before, if, if my marriage is out of sync, if my uh, being a father is out of sync, I'll just sit down. I'll just not preach. I'll take a break. I'll sit down. No sin, but I have to get my priorities right. So yeah, it's not been, for me, it hasn't been very challenging. It's just I'm very, and I'm probably not as busy as you guys think. Like my brother does so much work full time for me as well. I'm creating the content. Yes, I spend a lot of time doing it, but I also am home a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm probably home more than most of you. Um, some of you probably think I'm like 20, 20 hours a day. I'm not at all. I'm not as busy as you think. I spend way less time on ministry than you guys think. And if anything, there's times where I'm like, I need to do more. I'm not doing enough. Yeah. So I have four small kids and that's a balancing act, but there will be a day where they're all grown out of the house and we'll have, me and Alyssa will both have way more time to do yeah. full-time ministry to whatever extent that looks like to you. And I'm glad we kept that window AC on because it's so hot in here. I'm soaked in sweat. Okay. <laughs> Next I question. I think you passed one. I think you oh, skipped one. this one? Yeah, right here. Oh. What is your favorite thing to do? Do you have any hobbies? <laughs> I already know. Oh, my God. I already know our hobbies. Our hobbies are kids. Oh, that's what you were thinking? Well, I mean, our, I was yeah, thinking all your... Well, I don't have any hobbies right now. <laughs> All those hobbies are gone with our kids. Oh, I don't my have any hobbies. My last real hobby. How are you going to put me out? My last what? real hobby was fishing, and I don't even fish anymore. Every hobby yeah. I have is with our kids, is doing stuff with our kids. Yeah, now, yeah. I don't have any hobbies. You used to do a bunch of little things all yeah, the time. Yeah, but I, it wasn't when we had four little kids, and I wasn't yeah. streaming full-time. When I wasn't streaming full-time, my Everything last real now hobby is with was the fishing, kids. but I Taking don't have... Taking the kids camping. Yeah, I don't have hobbies now. Going to the beach, things like that. How are you gonna put me out? Like I'm that? just and saying. And laugh at me and be like, "Oh, you're." I'm just saying that you you I've get done, into a lot. I've of things. done a lot of stuff. Like you get into a lot. I've of pretty hobbies. much done every hobby. I don't do anything. So what are your hobbies? What do you enjoy doing besides online shopping? 
I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, like, ordering stuff for the kids, you know? Sorry, I wasn't trying to be rude. I wasn't trying to be rude. Uh, for the kids. It's all for the kids. You just throw it to me. Thanks. A little towel here. I'm getting a little glazed up. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. She only buys stuff really for the kids. She doesn't hardly ever buy herself anything. It's always like a new chair for the kids or something. And <laughs> but what are your hobbies though? You do enjoy buying stuff for the kids? A new chair. And like shopping for them? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm, not being, I'm not trying to be rude. A new chair. It's getting hot in here. I'm getting. <laughs> what is. Yeah, remember guys, our AC's broken. Give down below. No, I'm just kidding. Seriously though. Uh, our ho our I hobbies. I used to love party planning, but. She does love. She can. Yeah, no one can compete with her parties. Decorating. Good we have parties, we have a couple yeah. uh, we have a couple runner ups in the family trying to compete with the parties, but I've seen a couple. Yeah, she's she's <laughs> a like, serious Hello? party planner, <laughs> and yeah, she plans really good parties, birthday parties, and stuff for the kids. But all of our hobbies are spending time with our kids. Yeah, we have an eight, six, four, and two year old. So our kids are our life, and our if our hobbies don't include them, it's hard. I I think personally, like I had hobbies even when we had four kids, but I wasn't streaming the way I am now full time. So I had time. Yeah. So if I preach like. Tuesday and Sunday, I had a whole week to do my hobbies. Now, I don't have I don't have hobbies. But in a few years, I think I build I build this and it slows down. Then I'll probably start fishing. They want to know what uh, fish you catch. Oh, largemouth bass fishing, sport fishing. I did sell my bass boat. Oh, it feels bad. I wish I had a little crying thing <laughs> on here. I sold my cousin Z. Shout out to Z, my bass boat. But in a few years. If it's God's will, I will buy another bass boat. That is my plan in a few years. I don't know. We'll see. But yes, amen. Praise the Lord. That's our hobbies right now. Okay. We love camping with our kids, taking them out to the lake and doing yeah. that stuff. We love being outside. Taking them swimming, all that. Or swimming with them. We don't really take them. We have a pool at our house, but swimming with them. How do you handle, Alyssa, the stress of being married to a famous preacher. I'm just kidding. Oh, it doesn't say famous. It just says like, preacher. I was like, I'm reading added, it. I'm like, I added, where she is can he read the famous? Questions. <laughs> I'm joking. I added famous preacher. But, I think it probably is a lot different to not be married to a famous preacher. Okay, but go ahead. How do you handle the stress <laughs> of being married to a preacher? Um, well, I wipe, wipe the glazed donut off my face. I don't know. I'm kind of used to it now. I'm just kind of used to the... What stress is there besides that you are... When people confess in, how do I say? I'm not trying to be rude. I'm a, uh, guys, I'm not being mean. Like, you're not a per, you, how do I Are say? Are you going to say on. I'm not no, approachable? No, 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 Let me think, let me think, let me think. How am I going to word this? I'm going to use my words carefully. Um, you are, <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> everybody pause. Hold on, let me zoom into my own face. Um, how do I say this nicely? You're you're more like not awkward, know. but like you're uncomfortable <laughs> when people you're uncomfortable when people approach us. It's, it makes you uncomfortable with like random people, like more in yes. public, and random people are like Isaiah. Yeah, it's more awkward you know why? for you. Not because I'm awkward. I'm not no, an no, awkward. You're not person. awkward. You're not awkward. You're not awkward. <laughs> Thank it, you. It, you would say though. I just don't like the attention that it brings. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me put the camera. You just, just told on me here. I'm I'm awkward in front of everybody. No, no, no. You don't like. I don't like the attention. Yes, she. There we go. She doesn't you like attention. You could have just said that. That's I just I mean. don't like attention. I'm trying to use my words carefully, so oh, I'm struggling. So to, you told me I'm awkward. No, no, no you're not awkward. <laughs> you, you get, you feel awkward when people come up to you that we don't know. Like they just randomly yeah. like Isaiah. Well, like, it's a they're weird, yelling across Walmart. It's a weird feeling, yes. like being in, you know, a store, and you're just trying to check out and everything, and people are literally coming up and wanting his phone number and talking and taking selfies, and I'm just yes. like. I'm standing it, here with the kids love it. Yeah. I'm just standing here with the kids and I'm like, I'm just going to go, you know, I'm just not. That's what I'm saying. You're so nice to everybody. Okay. Yeah. But I wasn't trying to be rude saying you're awkward. I meant yeah. it feels awkward when people does, come up to yeah. you in public and they're yelling at the checkout and then the checkout person's like, uh, are you famous? And they ask you, it's just, it's just, it's not weird. I, I don't mind it. And I'll be like, I love that you come up and take yeah. a picture with me randomly in the checkout line with the target lady in the background. I, I have no problem with it. I've only denied one person and I was in TSA, going through security yeah, we with were my late. four kids being uh, yelled at. And like at, our 12 other family being, members. Being yelled yeah, at by was... a TSA officer because I didn't have all six boarding passes mm -hmm. for our kids in my hand. I had them on my phone. And then someone's like, can I get a picture? And I'm I'm like, in my mind, I want to be like, and if you're watching, I'm sorry, but you need to learn what common sense is. Yeah. But I was like, I'm literally getting yelled at by a TSA and you're asking for a picture right now. And I was like, no, I'll take one after we get out of the security. But that's the only time I've ever denied yeah. anyone a picture. So, yeah. How do you handle the stress? It's just, it's not stressful. Uh, yeah, it's not very stressful. I think the biggest stress for me is that not the people, 
I think what people assume that I should be because of your level. The expectation. Yes. So that really stresses me out is people always thinking that I need to be this preacher or. What do I always tell you? Uh, just be at home. Nobody cares. <laughs> See that, Nico? You like that? What I just did? Sorry, oh I blocked goodness. somebody super easy with my mouse. Sorry, Are they being mean? No, no, no. Peter's oh. just in his own. His own. Oh, you beat me. He just needs to get delivered. But go ahead. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Um, yeah, it's feeling like everybody's putting me on a, a pedestal of like, I have to live up to your, you know, which I'm. And I always tell you, no. Yeah. You're you like, don't, don't care. To. You don't have to. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. But I, in my head, I feel like people care. And I feel like people are like, oh, you have to do this women's ministry and do this channel and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I, just, I don't really feel that. But. Yeah, it's that's very simple. Just, God didn't call me the, to do that. That's been the biggest stress for me, I think, is just trying to still live life. Are we good? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah God, didn't, God didn't call her to, so she's not going to do it. She, God didn't tell... You don't have... Not everyone has to be a preacher. Not everyone has to be a social media influencer. If, yeah. I've always told her, if you don't want to, like, you don't have to. You know, and I, I do ask her to be on stream. I'm like, hey, every couple months, but... And she does like, but you do like coming, you do once we're on, like right now you're enjoying it yeah, once we're now. on. It's just it's the just, thought of coming on, being here. It's, it's, it's there's a it's lot anxious. of people, there's 2,000, 2,100 on yeah. right now. It's like, it's a different type of anxious than like, oh, I have anxiety. It's like a, yeah, it's nerve wracking. Like yeah. It's nerve wracking being in front of thousands. Oh, we just jumped to 2,700, 2,600. Anyways, it's nerve wracking being in front of 2,600 people talking about our life. And we already know as we're talking internet, you better not go out in Jesus name as we're talking. Uh, we already know you guys are thinking a million things and have your own opinion and whatever it is what it is. Mm -hmm. We don't care. We're trying to please God, not anybody else. Okay, we don't have any hobbies. We already answered that. Uh, and you, how do you handle stress? Biblical, biblical opinion as a pastor about vasectomies, tube tying, and family planning. Go for uh, it. Biblical opinions? There's not really a biblical opinion. I mean, there's not really a biblical scripture on getting a vasectomy, tying your tubes. I think that if you're done having kids and you like some of you just should not be having more kids because you can't even handle the kids <laughs> you have already. I have no problem with it because you're preventing the pregnancy. You're not ending the pregnancy. So there's a difference between ending a pregnancy and preventing a pregnancy and vasectomies, tube tying and family planning is you're preventing the pregnancy. You're not ending it. There's a huge difference. I have no problem with it. Get a vasectomy, get your tubes tied. You it's better than having a bunch of kids that you can't take care of and all that stuff. So. Isaiah, how do you stay humble with your level of influence? Very me? easily. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa. Alyssa keeps me humble. We're like, we'll literally. Can I just say this? Are you gonna? Are you? Gonna, am I allowed to say? Wait. Okay. Whatever. Say whatever. We'll be. She'll be like. I think she'll get her nails done once, right? And they're like, oh, what does your husband do? She's like, oh, he does like online stuff. And they're like, oh, like YouTube and stuff. She's like, yeah. They're like, oh, does he have a lot of followers? She's like, uh, he has a few thousand. I'm like, what? I don't even know she, if I said thousand. I think me, I said a few. She's like, he has a little bit. She keeps me humble. Let's just say it that way. Okay. She keeps me humble. <laughs> I was accident, like, I have two million. I had to give her all the I just numbers. keep you humble because I'm not into like yeah, numbers. Yeah, it's good. It's and good. I'm glad you do. I don't care about all that. She's so like, I'm go take like, out the garbage. I don't care that those 7,000 people on your stream tonight. <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's good. It keeps me humble. I appreciate it. And my kids keep me humble. They look at my silver play button that's in our living room. They're like, uh, when are you going to get a gold one? Why is your play button not yeah. the silver? So yeah, my family keeps me humble. But really though, the way I stay humble in my opinion is I never wanted to be a preacher or do this. I was an atheist 12 years ago at an altar cussing at God and God changed my life and told me to preach. So I have zero desire to be famous. I have zero desire for likes, for views. It doesn't move me. It doesn't make me feel good at all. I don't care because I never wanted to be a preacher. I wanted to be a police officer and I was an atheist and God called me. So in my mind, I'm just me doing this tonight and everything we do is just me being obedient to God. So I don't care about anything else. I don't care about, I have zero desire to be known, to be on a stage. I don't want to go mm -hmm. on stages. I don't care about crowds. It doesn't move me to preach in front of thousands of people. Um, it keeps me humble because I'm like, I don't care. If God told me to stop yeah. doing this tomorrow, I would. I don't have that striving or desire to have something or hold on to something. I just want to please God and that's all that matters. So yeah, that keeps me humble. Yep. Okay. Alyssa, do you watch cleaning or organization reels? I don't even know yeah. what that is, but... What I watch that? all the time. What Props is it? to those people. What is it? It's like the people that like do their like organize. This with is mom me. side of talk, mom talk or mom side of. I don't get or, that like, these videos. Watch Evan. you don't. What? No, yeah, I don't get watching I don't people get clean. Reels. I'm like, wow, that's it's amazing for you. 
So you or like the people who have like all their fridge organized. So yeah, you watch not. those? I watch them, yeah. Okay. I I don't uh, do them, but I watch them. <laughs> Nico, you watch them? So you get mom talk videos? Mom, How do you make what do you time? Call it? Mom talk? I don't know. I just made that oh. up. It's probably not even real. Is that real, Stevie? Is mom there a mom talk? talk? No. Okay, I'm making up. I'm making up things. We don't know. How do you make time as a couple? We do podcasts together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think me been traveling with you. Yeah, we That's just went good. last weekend together. Yeah. For 12 hours, we were in Washington and we flew back. It was very intense. <laughs> we probably need to do better. We don't make enough time together as a couple, but we should probably do better. Yeah. We don't really do much date nights and stuff like that. Our date nights consist of like the last time we went on a legitimate vacation. Someone, and she's probably in the chat. Shout out to you. You're Jenny. awesome. Yeah, Jenny, I think we lost. If you guys get kicked out, just refresh. Do you know that was like when Harvey here, was okay. Harvey was like a month old. Yeah, so we haven't been, been out years. just like on a trip together in a long time. Well, we just went out last weekend, but I mean like a vacation trip. Yeah. And somebody gave us uh, like a timeshare thing in, in the mountains. A weekend in Tahoe. Yes. There you go. I don't even remember. And we got to the hotel and spent the first two hours watching videos of our kids. <laughs> so we have issues like you guys, you go on vacation, all you talk about is your kids. We were like, they would love this. There's a little slide for them. And we spent the whole vacation looking yeah. pictures of our kids, watching videos of our kids, and saying how much they would have enjoyed it. So, yeah. When you have kids and you really love your kids, some of you don't really like your kids, so I get it. You're like, oh, like I would love Like, every time we think there. about going on a vacation, I'm like, well, let's just bring the kids. Like, why would let's we just, just bring them? They would love it. They'll have so much fun. Yeah, our world revolves around our family and stuff, so... Okay, Alyssa, what Bible plan did you follow, and do you have any tips on getting through the Old Testament? It was the, I just used it from the Filament Bible app, but I'm sure that there's any, like you can Google a 99, it was a 100 day plan, so 100 day reading plan. And what was the other part? Um, you moved do you have the any question. tips on getting through the Old Testament? Um, don't think about it too much. <laughs> just read? Just read. Don't, so you're saying they shouldn't every time they read Leviticus come up to their husband and say, no. what does this law yeah. mean? Why yeah, did, did they do this? <laughs> Why did so-and-so kill so-and-so's well, kid Well, that was the thing about, okay, so the there's different times to like read. So there's like studying and then there's like just getting through like a plan and like a day thing and reading it. What? Why You're are you laughing? laughing? Cause I was saying stuff about the Oh, I used to ask you that. I'm like, well, why this? Why that? And he would just. I'd be like, I have to look into it. I have to I'd, look into it. Yeah. Stevie does that to Nico. They're, he they're always says that. Us. Let me look. I'll look into it later. I'm like, well, that's no help. But yeah. All right. What relationship and dating advice would you give to young people? Uh, Keep your hands to yourself. Live holy. He's probably not the Keep one. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> Wear a tight belt. Don't be. Don't be <laughs> acting dumb. I'm serious. Keep your hands to yourself. No tinky time until you're married. Okay. Um, I would say be in groups. What happened to the mouse? I lost Be in groups yeah. all oh, yeah. the time. All the groups, time. Be in groups, stay accountable. Even though you're engaged and you're going to be able to do it in a few months, don't try and do it then. Um, <laughs> don't say, well, we're going to be married. That doesn't count. Yeah. No test driving. Stay pure. Guard your eyes. What else? Listen to the adults in your life. Listen to adults in your life. Wise counsel. What else? They're not trying to just be mean. <laughs> yeah, when they tell you not to do stuff... Believe them. Um, what else? I, I got people. nothing. Pray, read your Bible, all that good stuff. We're not, uh, we don't have a whole, we're not doing a teaching on relationship for young people, but the uh, we're, reason why we're joking and saying all this stuff about sexual things is because, in my opinion, 99% of the young people that ask me this are, the, the one struggle they have is sexual struggles. So we get it. So that's why we're telling you sexual mm -hmm. stuff because that's the number one thing that young people struggle with. What's healthier, McDonald's or Wendy's? Uh, probably Wendy's, but we haven't had fast food in a few days. I know. Yeah, I'm so proud of Yay. you. We haven't DoorDash in three days. We're three days. No, sober. don't say we. Do well, not I mean, me. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? I, I, I DoorDash Jamba Juice because I have to have a and shake before thing. the stream. Yeah, but I threw I, that away. It wasn't good. <laughs> but we haven't. Door, our family hasn't DoorDash. Okay. Man, you're just putting me Sorry, out. Sorry, I'm just Our saying. Don't DoorDash. lie to the people. Our family has not DoorDash in three days, which is huge for us because we, we used to DoorDash like every day. So I made a meal plan. And what We're do they call them? To it. Something wife. What are they called? There's a name for them. What? A wife that like cooks and cleans and stays at home and does. There's trad like wife. a trad wife. A what? Not trad not trans wife. Trad wife. Trad. Trad. Traditional. traditional. Wife. That's what it means. I never heard that. Oh, traditional. You're a trad wife. I was gonna say a housewife. Hashtag trad wife. Okay. 
Um, so any advice for me? I'm engaged, the... waiting to be married. The same advice we gave the young people. You're not married yet. So don't, don't do married stuff until you're married. Stay pure. Um, Did you feel love at first sight or are you just like, eh? That's a question. I didn't say that. It's a question. Look, it says, eh, that's how they typed it. I copy and pasted these. I didn't feel like I'm going to marry you at first sight, but I did feel like you, like I loved your personality. It's all about personality, man. So what? she definitely didn't marry me for my looks. Okay. Oh, stop I, I it. did feel, I don't, uh, I'm trying to remember. Okay, the first time I literally, legitimately, I used two L words, you're not supposed to use those two words together, but legitimately, literally, the first time I saw you was at church and you sat next to me. And I think you my heart did skip a beat. You sat next to me. No, you came and sat I next to me. I was nope. sitting there. Nope. I promise you. Your friend you. was mad because she's like, oh, maybe it I was I sat next to you. Yeah, no, I was you sitting down. No, you sat in my row. You was, sat in my row. Me and her were sitting down and you sat next to I me. I think I do remember my heart skipping a beat when I saw you. I'm not going to really? lie. Really? Yeah, I think so. I think I told you that before. I don't remember that. Yeah, I had butterflies. Keep but I was telling like, me more. But I remember you had kidding. all these breasts on. You look like the Queen of Sheba. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That was the era where all the 20 gold bracelets on one 2011. arm 2011. Cool. But yeah, I remember seeing you at church. You sat next to me, and that was the first time I ever saw you. And you had saw me, but I didn't see you because, you know, we yeah. were in a crowd. But yeah, my heart did skip a beat. But I don't know if it was love at first sight. Did you but love I was me? like, ooh, who's this? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys correct each other when one falls short? I mean, we've been doing that all night. <laughs> but do, uh, do we correct each other? Obviously. <laughs> do we correct each other? Yeah. I think so. How? I mean, do you think so? I'm trying to think of a time. I think we always correct each other. Yeah. I think our whole life is but correcting each other. But I think before we correct each other, I think we're also both really hard on ourselves. Yeah. So I think like I correct myself before you could even think of it, you know? And yeah. the same for you. You're like, I'm, I need to pray more. I need this. So it's never like, I'm like, oh, I think you're, you know, you're getting a little lukewarm over here. Yeah. I think, uh, I'm trying to think, do we? Like when I was in my like Bible struggling phase, do you think you ever were like? No. I've yeah. never been like, oh, you need to do this more. You're not spiritual enough. The only time that I've corrected is when I'm like, I'm super, I'm a lot more, not strict, but like with the kids, I'm very like, I, I look at every little thing that they're doing. And so a lot of times a I'm like, yeah. don't, don't watch, they're not allowed to watch this or don't, they're not allowed to say that or whatever. So I'm probably more strict. Yeah. I mean, we do correct each other in the way that like, or we I'll talk tell to them her or, not yeah. to allow the kids to do this or say this or whatever. Don't yeah. watch, don't watch, don't let your kids watch the Barbie show. Shout out to all of you guys that let your kids watch Barbie. It's terrible. Okay. If you could change one thing about yourself and your relationship, what would it be? Oh, that's a good one. Oh man. What would you change about yourself in our relationship? I already know what I'm going to say. Really? Yeah. I don't know what it's, you're It's say. our one thing we always talk about. I'm not affectionate enough. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what I would change. What uh, would you change? I don't, I don't know. Oh, I oh I got tons of stuff to change. You can't think of one. Hey, one thing. Oh, let me wipe my glazed face right now. Um, I mean, you are you know you're just perfect. There's nothing you need to change. Do you think that I need to like care more about like the online stuff? No, I don't care if you don't care. Oh well, then There's I was gonna say that I, do. I don't. I literally don't care about online or. I don't care that you care. I don't want you to care about online. Online is superficial and shallow. <laughs> you talking about being like an influencer? Or what? Yeah. Or, or like, my stuff. Uh, no, like, like me being like online and like social media online. in general. I don't, I don't like want you to you be want an me. influencer. Oh. No, it's, it's weird. If, you, if God didn't tell you to do it, don't, don't do it. Yeah. But no, I don't want you to be like an influencer and be like, hey guys, welcome back. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I would be more affectionate. That's my big area of like being affectionate around people or in public yeah. or like, yeah, outside yeah. of like having kids at that time. But yeah. For sure. <laughs> Did you catch that? Nico? I'm trying to be safe because there's kids watching. So, I mean, we have four kids, so we all know. I mean, my obviously, goodness. we're not lacking in that area. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Advice for couples in ministry together. <laughs> Don't. How do I word this? Don't uh, put expectations on them that God isn't putting on them. Boom. That's a good way to say it. Yeah, that's don't put a really an expectation on your spouse yeah. that God didn't put on them or don't try to make them be something you want them to be for the ministry. If your wife's not called to 
be on the stream or be doing whatever it is. A mm -hmm. lot of guys make their wife be in a role they don't want to be in. The wife's miserable, and then she despises the ministry because she didn't want to be the yeah, kid's pastor. Good. But the, the husband made her be the kid's pastor, and it's all bad. So don't let your wife do what God's called her to do, and then let your husband do what God's called him to do, and don't get in the way of their calling. Someone said that's kind of sus. No, we're married. We do married stuff all the time. Uh, yeah. um, don't get in the way of your wife's <laughs> calling or your husband's calling. If your husband has a calling, let him do what he's called to do and understand God's called him. And if your wife has a calling, let her do what God's called her to do. Don't don't try to manipulate them and dominate them and make them do something. I would say that uh, ministry will always take. It'll always... There's never going to be a moment where somebody doesn't need something yeah. from you. Yes. So you need to have those boundaries and boundaries like your kids are important. Your family's important. At the end of the day, that's what's important. And you could very easily, it's like a slippery slope of like doing too much for everybody else and, you know, forgetting what really matters. So, yeah, absolutely. And then for those of you, oh, I missed it. Somebody was saying something about, oh, you want your husband to be less affectionate. When I'm talking about affection, I'm talking about affection, holding, yes, like around people, hands, yeah. not affection, intimacy, it, no. stuff behind closed doors. That's not what we're talking <clears throat> about. We're talking about in person, um, I'm sorry, around people and like in the car, holding hands, stuff like that, okay? I need to work on that better. I'm, I'm more just like not affection in that area. Any advice when you did that? Did you love first time when you did that? Sorry, I lost my place. Current favorite worship song? Oh, I just downloaded it. Tell all the people. They want to know. It's the one that we heard at the myself. Breakthrough Church. It's called Claim It. So good. Uh, who sings it? Hang on. Tell us. The people want to know. The Well. The Well. And guys, if you get kicked well, I'm sure out, we more did people lose a thousand people. They're getting back, but just come back. YouTube will, if we lose service, they'll kick everybody out and you have to come back in. It's a thing that happens and it happened. It's okay. We'll, we'll get them back. Okay. Yeah. What's it called? It's called Claim It by The Well. Claim It by The Well. And my we favorite song it. that I've been stuck on for like a month or two has been The Blood by, I don't know who does it, but uh, a bunch of people do it. Don't say the whole song. I'm just kidding. No. Uh, but a bunch of people do it. I think Bethel I gonna, covers it. I don't know who wrote it, but it's called The Blood. And I know Bethel oh yeah, Beth, does The one it. we have is Bethel. On yeah, here. but there, I have a few versions. I don't know who wrote it though, but I don't, I don't think Bethel wrote it, but it's a mm -hmm. really good song. It's not Hillsong, guys. Everybody relax, okay? Nothing weird happening here. <laughs> You guys correct me. <laughs> Thanks for laughing because I have so much dry humor and no one, no one's catching my jokes. I laugh. Radar apologetics. Shout out to you, bro. Said stream still good. Thank you, bro. Mm. I appreciate you. You're a legend. Thanks. Um, would you ever? Oh, this is a good one. Would you ever consider giving raising canes another chance? The f you gave them is killing me. If, if you guys don't know, we did it. We did a fast food tier list, which made a bunch of people mad, but it's okay. You'll get over it. And we rated all the fast food, and I gave Raising Cane's an F because I don't like their sauce, and all they sell is chicken. I think I so, do need to give it. I had it one time, saying, and it was cold, and I think I, I probably once, should dry, give it another and I chance. I didn't like the sauce. I already gave the whole argument. If you're gonna do food and you only give chicken, it better be like top ten, top tier, and it's not in my opinion. So yeah. Will ever consider, yes, I'll reconsider Raising Cane's. Yes. I'll try it again, and we'll do a new tier list, and maybe I'll, I'll move them from F to D. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what arguments What arguments or disagreements? I tried to pick hard questions if you guys can't tell. What arguments or disagreements? Oh, I'm sorry. What, what do? do arguments or disagreements look like for you guys? Well, usually I'll just tell her to go sleep in another room. I'll yell at her on the top of my lungs. And I'll usually Never. just whip Ever. my belt and say, don't make me. Ever. No, I'm just kidding. What, what does it look like? <laughs> Nico's, Nico's crying. Nico's dying. What is it? Are you okay, dude? Nico's going to fall out of the chair. Hopefully people knew that you've never done that. Okay. What? All the Heresy Hunters already clipped it, so I it's know. okay. Uh, coming, to a, coming to a Heresy Hunter channel that no one watches near you. <laughs> all right. All right. For real. What do our arguments or dis disagreements look like? I'm gonna say what I, I think, but but it's gonna sound I very. I want to hear what you're gonna no, say. No, no, it's gonna sound oh, very. Oh, my mouth is cramping. No, 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 it's gonna sound very like. Oh, I ah! knew Isaiah was a controlling husband. I knew he was. Eh. I I knew that's how I felt no, so bad for stuck this. in this controlling relationship. I want to hear this. <laughs> I'm falling the down this couch. Okay, if we have, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this. I know I'm gonna get flack. I know some of you feminists in the chat are gonna be like, "How dare you." This is what happens usually, and you could correct it, and feel free to say whatever, put me under the bus, put me on blast, drag me behind the bus, whatever, run me over twice with it, I don't care. <laughs> if we have a disagreement, which is very rare, we don't really argue. Have we ever argued? I'm not, and guys, please, we're not perfect. Please don't be like, oh, our marriage. 
but we don't really argue. Like we've never raised our voice at each other. We've never been yeah, like, no. eh. our disagreements are usually her saying what she thinks, me saying what I think, and then me being like, okay, we're gonna do what I think because you're a fixer. Because I'm the head of the house, yeah. I'm the priest, and I do the finances, I do like the technical stuff, and so this is what we're just gonna do. But has that ever even happened? I feel like that's happened maybe once or twice. The people um, want to know because you have a lot swirling in your head right now, I can tell. <laughs> Hold on, let me put the camera just on you. No, please don't do tell that. Tell the that truth, shame the devil, don't lie to the people. <laughs> oh, the, the zoom's off. Um, I think What just, do our arguments and disagreements look like? Yeah, I mean, it's just us talking about it. I'll be like, about the whole like affection thing. Okay. You know what I mean? But what do I say when you say, hey, you need to be more affectionate? You're like, hey, okay, I, I need to change. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, what a good husband I am. Oh, I'm just kidding. You know, I'm just kidding. Well, you're like, <laughs> I'm joking. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm trying to be funny. It's okay. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Um, let's see. What do I say? You say that you were going to change and I'm going to work on this. And what other disagreements or arguments do we have? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm literally racking my brain. <laughs> What does that mean? I said Beltavar. Oh, like, what does Beltavar mean? Kate has the cards. Okay. I'm going to be quiet, let her talk. I'm trying. I'm going to be quiet and let you talk, Alyssa. Um, I don't know what else we disagree about. They said for me to be quiet and let you talk. If we disagree about, like, what the kids could watch or anything, but then, I, you know, you say no, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I said, as for me in this house, we will serve the Lord. When Joshua lined up the prophets of Baal, what else? No. <laughs> they said, let you talk, so go ahead. I don't have anything to say. The people want you to talk. Am I, am I dominating right now and talking over no. you and not letting you talk? No. You feel like that you can't talk and I'm silencing your voice? I think, honestly, I think when it comes to disagreements or like if I want to do something and you want to do something else, like say for the kids... For example, if okay. you say, don't watch this, and I'm like, well, I think it's like, okay, I think you're being a little bit much about it. Which never really happens. Yeah, but I'm, I'm making a, mm -hmm. a story. And then you're like, why? Well, I, I just don't want them watching. I'm like, okay, like, I just, I trust that you're responsible and you're going to be in charge of everything. So I'm like, okay, then we're just not going to do it. Yeah. And there's not, like, guys, we don't really have hardly any disagreements yeah. or arguments on anything. Like, If rarely, I was, like, rarely. super passionate about something, I mean, you would listen. It's not like you're... I'm very... I'm, I'm yeah. easygoing. I'm not like, oh, we're it has both, to be I think way. we're both really easygoing. We are. We're both easygoing, and we're yeah. blessed. Praise the Lord. Okay. Talk about the disagreements where pop. you think Otter Pop papers belong in the trash, and he thinks they belong in the sink. I have never put the no. top of Otter Pops in the sink. You don't no, remember that? No, I haven't Where's done Nico that. Where's Nico It'll ruin the seat. I am literally... Guys, we're talking about when you no. cut Otter Pops because we, we're I... an Otter Pop family and the top of Stevie them, and Nico they say I over. put them in the sink. I don't. We're all talking. I just drop I'm them doing on the, the floor dishes. and then every few no. weeks I pick them up off we're the ground. We're doing the dishes and I'm digging them out of the sink and I'm like, that are these me. supposed the to be kids. in here? He leaves it for like five minutes and then goes, oh yeah, I cut them over the sink. I don't remember that. Yeah, you did. I put, I put, I cut the Otter Pops either on like the outside fridge on the top of it or outside. I leave, them, leave them on the floor the and then after like a week, I pick them up off the ground. <laughs> after they're all sticky everywhere. I clean them up. I clean the backyard. Where'd my thing go? Oh, sorry, Nico. Let me get back. Get me back. Okay. So, but yeah, our disagreements, arguments, we don't really yell at each other. We just like, at the end of the day, basically our our biblical, the biblical models, like the, the husband is the head of the house and the priest of the home. So if I say, hey, I don't want the kids watching this or doing this or saying this or saying this word, then <laughs> Alyssa's like, okay, that's the rules. That, yeah. it's, it's the rules. And if she says, I don't want the kids doing this, then that's the rules. So we're just like, okay, I'm the priest. If there's a financial decision, I do the finances. So I'm like, hey, we can't afford this or no, we're not gonna buy this yeah. now or no, we're not getting this thing we want right now, maybe in a few months, maybe in a year. Then Alyssa's like, okay. She doesn't argue. We don't have these arguments back and forth. She knows like, okay, you take care of the finances. You're making the decision. If she took care of the finances and I came to her and said, I want to buy this. And she's like, hey, I do the finances. I know the numbers. We can't afford that right now. Or we're not getting that. I would just go, okay, well, when can we mom? Or when I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would just be like, well, when can we, or what do we need to yeah. do? But that's how it works, right? So we don't have we don't have any like big arguments or disagreements. We have never mm -hmm. gotten a blowout where we're yelling and someone's sleeping on the couch or no. sleeping in the other room. None of that. 
I think I've slept in the other room one time and it was because she was super, super sick. And I think I've <laughs> that's happened before where I was super yeah. sick with the flu or something and you were in the other room. No, but I think that's... A, other than that. Uh, yeah, that's a big one too. Because we never, we never fight and like separate. Oh yeah, we don't do the... I'm like, I'm sleeping in my bed, girl. If you want to no. sleep, you could go... No, we don't do that. But seriously though, guys, again, I want to make sure though as we're doing this Q&A, we have issues we were, are working on. I have areas I'm trying to be vulnerable with of like lack of affection or whatever. We are not perfect. When we say we don't fight and argue, that does not mean we're perfect. We are flawed in many areas. We are trying hard in many areas and we're get, we have tons of other issues that we're mm -hmm. working through. None of them sin, but that we're working through just like you. So please don't be like, you guys never argue or fight, but there's yeah, other areas that we need to work on. Yeah, we're not perfect. So I hope we're not painting that picture um, about my trad wife here. Okay, is it trad wife? <laughs> Yeah, it's trad. Oh, do you oh. guys like trad wives? I like <laughs> I, traditional wives. I don't even wives. know what that was. Okay, I like trad wives. But okay, if you don't like trad wives, then you probably have blue hair. Okay, what's been the hardest thing? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, that was like called for. Only certain people know what that means. What's been the hardest thing you both had to get, you've, ha you've both gone through together? Mm. I know, but I'll let you go first because I talk too much. What do you think it is? My lips, if you guys, why keep wiping my lips? Cause they're so dry. They're drier than I your church. I have colored and chapstick. So I'm like, I have chapstick, but I don't want to make my lips all shiny. Oh. And then you guys be like, is he wearing lipstick? What I knew it, that oops. he was zesty. What is the hardest thing? Look, they just feel like they're like cracking and flaking and frosted flaking mm. all over. Go ahead, sorry. What do you think? I know, I know what I think, but I'll say mine after you say yours. I want to see if it matches. This is the newlywed game, the game that we didn't get to do tonight. Yeah, we're gonna do the newlywed game. I think booking. kids and how we just you change after them. The hardest thing you both no, like the hardest. I think I they know, mean like what's the think. hardest like one thing like one event in life that was the hardest. You think JoJo? Yeah, that's what I'd yeah. say. JoJo, when our we had our second daughter was in the NICU for how many days? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen days. She stopped breathing the night she was born. She got rushed, she got a CPAP. They pumped too much oxygen in her lungs. Then they were gonna do a surgery to get the oxygen out. But then we prayed and they didn't need to do a surgery. Yeah. But then she had to be in the NICU for 14 days and we had to go to the NICU every single day. And she had tubes all over her and she's 100% healthy now. But that, in my opinion, that was the hardest thing we've ever been yeah. through together, right? Yeah. So yeah, same thing. Do you believe premarital counseling is necessary? Uh, I, uh... okay. Yes, if, if, your premarital counselor, this is what I think premarital counseling needs to be. I think they need to sit you down. I, I don't know how you guys do it nowadays because we got married 10 years ago. But I think they need to sit you down and say, maybe they did do Nino this to style? us. No, 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 I think they did do this to us. Gary and Scarlett. Yes. I, I don't know, I probably wasn't th thinking because I just was like too excited to get married. But I think they need to sit you down and go, Marriage is not what you see in the movies. It's not the fairy tale. You think you're going to be this. There's like, you know what I mean? Because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people who go into marriage think it's this fairy tale 24 7. You're obsessed with your spouse. There's no problems ever. Everything's going to be perfect. You're going to have that honeymoon your whole marriage, but it's not the case. Like yeah. life happens. So I think someone needs to be like, okay, let's be realistic and remove all the expectations you had when you were 10 years old or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think it needs to be more practical. I think too much of it is is a, a fairy tale a fairy tale yeah so i think i think also though when you're in marriage counseling you literally don't care about yeah you're just you're stuck in the you're fairy just, yeah, tale you're trying to get to that wedding night and yeah everybody in your life is like it's gonna be hard it's gonna be at uh, the wedding night really i say that i was kidding. gonna <laughs> no one caught that see y'all are catching my jokes i know i'm sorry okay it's really ahead. hard to tell people <laughs> <laughs> okay you're not paying attention bro okay go ahead sorry it's really hard to tell people who are wanting to get married how hard it is because nobody even they're not thinking of all that they're just yeah. thinking oh i love him and he's going to be like this forever and we're going to have so much fun what are you trying to say no, i'm just kidding I'm I, just I, I agree i agree i think i think it is good though it's, it's not good to have, it's like, not required but i think it is important and I, I think, think you should go to pre if your church offers premarital yeah. counseling i think you should go like to it. teaching how to do finances and teaching how to do arguments and healthy ways for this because most people don't have any healthy examples of anything. Yeah. I mean, we got blessed having two Lots healthy good, families. Yeah. That's a good. But a lot models. of people are, that's not the case. So it could be very, very good. Yeah. It's hard to say. I think a lot of people rush into marriage and they end up miserable after the first month. So I'm trying to think of how could we avoid that? I think that. it's more not premarital counseling, but 
during oh, yeah. during <laughs> honestly the first six months is probably more important because a lot of people they get stuck in the yeah. vanity of being married and the and the glitz and glamour then they get married and they're like oh i have to like wake up to you now so i think yeah. getting after six months is the best and most time that's when people are just left to fend for themselves but yeah there's no book to say how to live a married life and people how to live help. like a holy married life is yeah. yeah is there a time you guys didn't talk because you had an argument uh yeah when i don't remember where we weren't talking for like a day well i don't think because we're completely not talking but maybe you have to like stream or you're no, about no, no, to no. live no, on a trip on. or Let me something read the question is there a time you guys didn't talk for a while because of an argument oh okay so it may be <laughs> if, a stream no i'm no i'm oh, saying go ahead, go ahead. if there's something that i want to bring up maybe i'll wait until like i know you have like a free day no, to no, talk no, no, about no. it okay hold on sorry i Let know me, but i'm saying we've never ignored each other they're talking yeah, about you get in a blow-up argument and you're like oh, i don't want to talk to you and you go like a couple days without talking because oh, yeah, you're in a blow-up that. argument we that's what they're that. saying no not like you're not talking because i'm well, I'm saying if something happened i'm not gonna like blow it up because i'll wait oh yeah no they meant like did yeah. you get in an argument and you didn't talk because you guys were mad at each no. other no we haven't done that uh do you believe in physical discipline Yes, 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 I do, but I also think spank it's... them kids. In fact, Don't get off, are. get off the stream right now. And go, go spank one of your kids. Oh my gosh. Isaiah, go spank Beltavar. one of your kids. One of your kids right now. Isaiah Beltavar says one of your kids right now is probably doing something while you're watching this. They need to get spanked. Go spank them. Yes, I'm just kidding. I'm yes, kidding. but the Harris Sanders, by the way, are getting so much free content also tonight. Also, is oh, you guys need to give me some royalties. Different per child. Yes. Some children. If your kids need to be spanked, we yes. do believe in spanking. Yes, but you could also do. get a very good reaction yep. from taking something away for a different personality of a child. Yeah, not every kid That's needs... That's what I'm saying. Not every kid needs physical every discipline. Every child needs discipline, but... One of our kids, if you look at her, she cries. So you don't have to even try you, to spank her. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but yes, we do believe in... The reason why we believe in physical discipline is because the Bible teaches, spare the rod, spoil the child. The Bible talks about physically discipline. It says if you don't physically discipline them, you hate your kids. And but that's literally what it says. But also clarify that we're not like discipline. to like the abuse no, of like No, that's different. We're talking about discipline. And... We're talking about where you say you did something wrong. You're going to get a spanking. You take it, make it a separate event. After you spank them, you hug them, you kiss them. You say, this is why I hate spanking you. This is what we tell our kids. Yeah. We hate having to discipline you. We don't want to do this. I don't want to spank you, but you did something that's gonna hurt you and is damaging and wrong and we're only doing this because we love you and doing it the right proper way not sitting there beating them till they're bruised not no, beating them till they're screaming never. you're drawing blood not no, oh smacking them slapping them not using your hand you know we i've always been taught like use like a spoon because it doesn't relay your physical touch to the, hitting them and guys we're not here to do a whole sermon on spanking no. but we do believe being clear on physical discipline because the Bible does teach it. And you don't have, you could call us archaic. You could say that's old school. You could you could not agree at all. It's not salvific. That's not a salvation issue. But we do believe in spanking kids. But our kids rarely get spanked. They rarely do. Like they rarely do. At Usually we'll either take something from them or go, go to your room. And if they keep doing it after we've told them to go to the room, then there might be an escalation where they need a spanking. And there's moments where you just know, okay, they need a spanking. They've crossed the line. This but it's is not very, time out. But it's rare. Very it's rare. rare. But we have spanked our kids and we do believe in it. So yeah, yes. there's that. I know the chat's going crazy. Some of you are like, no, don't spank. And some people are saying it does. I got spanked growing up and I think it worked and all that stuff. How did you res her up? I asked for a number to go to a prayer meeting. Okay, just kidding, but seriously, kind of. Um, was it easy <laughs> choosing kids' names? Uh, no. Uh, I don't like choosing kids' names. <laughs> it was hard. Who, cho was who hard. chose all the names? We both, we knew our first kid, boy or girl, was going to be Justice. Okay. We both loved the name. So we knew Justice. I wanted a JoJo, so Brittany found a Journey. And I was like, oh, I can use JoJo. And I love that name. Yeah. And then I really wanted a Harvey. So you just wanted nicknames, yeah, just basically. Wanted nicknames. And you knew we weren't going to name our kids JoJo or Harvey. Yeah, no. So... And then you I loved Harvest. The Harvest. Yeah, he loved Harvest. Actually, I think it was our first kid. I said one of our kids is going to be named Harvest because a guy named Daniel Bashta has a sister who's a worship leader named Harvest Bashta. And I liked one of her songs. And I saw the name Harvest. Oh I was like, ooh, that's a cool name. And then I didn't name and it I after wanted her, Harvey, but I, so. I love the name Harvest. And the Harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. It's very biblical. Harvest is all around biblical. And she liked Harvey. And then what about Nova? You want a Nova. Yeah. I wanted I, Haven. Yes, we actually did a poll we on the did stream. A poll on the what stream. was the results of that poll? Do you remember? 
It was a lot for Nova and a little. It was little... like eighty. It was like ninety-five percent Nova, five percent Haven. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we did do a poll back in our OG Facebook streams. If you didn't know, Isaiah Spankovar. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Kate, for all the names. Mods, please don't ban her. I love the funny names. Isaiah Spankovar. Yeah. So yeah, we have Justice, Journey, Harvest, and Nova. And yes, there's that. Okay. I, oh my gosh, I have to read this one. That's Isaiah, so mean. respectfully, why do you smile so weird? You look so awkward when you smile. This girl. Why would you put that in this there? This girl, you ask this question every stream, every picture of our family. This I want to see what like, she looks like. Hey, respect. Hey, relax, oh, sorry. girl. Relax. <laughs> sorry. Relax. Sorry. She's trying to fight you right now. <laughs> okay. Um, every stream. But like, why every would time you we ask post that? a family picture. Let me smile. Oh one. my gosh. One. Hold on. Now I can't do it because I want to laugh. Let me try to smile. Okay, we're gonna take a family picture. No, nope, that's not my smile. That's awkward. I, I, I look at my picture and I don't feel like it's awkward. I feel like I have the most generic, basic, like front teeth only smile. Yeah. Right? Don't you think so? Don't I have like the most generic, just like show your front teeth smile? There's nothing I just think. Smile. Fun People fact: I didn't so smile rude. for a picture for 20 years. So you did it. That. Um, anyways, this is one Thanks, reason dude. why I don't Thanks, like bro. social I media. You. That's why. That's why you work for anybody me. can just. <laughs> Nico said my teeth are straight and white. Thank you. Anybody can just say anything. I don't take offense to this at all, but she literally. We says, literally asked hey, every family let's picture. This girl comments. You have the most awkward smile. I'm like that. Nobody asked your. Opinion. I'm like that's not respectful, but it's okay. It's funny to me. Okay. I put that in, by the way, so I don't mind I it. I know. Why I, would you put that it's in? It's funny. Alyssa's all mad. You got her all hot. She's about to fight somebody. Where are you at? Come out in the chat. We're gonna ban you right now. I'm gonna let Alyssa ban you. I'm just kidding. Okay, anyways. That's just rude. I think it's anyways. funny. Um, how no, many more kids do you want? None. This is not the Illuminati. That's how many. Finally. This summer, we've resolved after the <laughs> His three, patience. after the first three <laughs> days of summer, and our kids every morning wake us up. We decided we're we're we love our family. We have a perfect family. Our kids are just right. We're just yes, praise the Lord. It's just right. We're so good. we're done we having feel kids. feel really good. Yeah, we love our kids. I've always felt really good with all girls. Everyone's like, oh, you need a boy. Mm. How do you balance preaching with family? I already answered that. Put my family before preaching. It's very easy to balance. Alyssa, will you ever make a YouTube channel? Um, I don't like saying never, but not anytime soon. Yeah, she has no desire to. No desire. So if she has no desire to, then subscribe to I my second channel. I just can't imagine both of us. <laughs> As I saw all of our clips, go subscribe. I can't imagine both of us trying to do this. Yeah. No. Uh, it. It's a lot of you, work. You have to, you have to want to. It's a lot you have of to work. Be called. What advice would you give young women who want to be a good wife and good mother one day? Excuse me. Mm. These are hard questions. Are hard these are questions. like whole video questions. I should have like read all these first. Mm. We only have a couple more. I think we have like seven or eight more. What would I give them? What would you give them? <laughs> like I can't say because I'm not a girl. You all struggle differently than me. I feel like marry somebody that you can trust. That's good. Like, I really trust your opinion. I trust that you're always going to do what's right for us. And like, you're so nice. Well, I just i I trust everything about you. So it just makes you it trust easy. I would hit a million subs this year. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Whoa. I'm sorry. That was such a good moment. I ruined. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um. No. Just it. You know, our, our culture is very like the wife can't submit and women, you know, whatever. But it's easy to submit because I literally trust that you're always going to do what's right for us. Yay. Thank you. You're making me feel very blushed right now. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling very red. Will you guys ever do a cooking stream? I think that would be hilarious and fun. Considering I can't even boil water, I think that would be so fun. To do. <laughs> I think it would be awesome. You can, make, you can make mac and cheese. I actually do make... I'm not going to lie, some, I do make a bomb craft it, box mac and cheese. My kids have said that I make the best craft box mac and cheese. And they want to know what's the secret. The secret is you have to 7 minutes and 30 seconds boil the water. That's it. Don't go a second over. 7.30. You got to do it exactly what the box says. All right. Uh, can you say Nini, Mike loves you on stream. Nini is my wife. Nini, I hope you're watching even though we Hi, postponed Nini. this video <laughs> three times. So you're probably not even watching. But Nini, Mike loves you. So there you go. Do you guys feel like equal even though one has a louder personality? Who has a louder personality? What are they? Who, who are they talking about? It's not me. Are they talking about me? I have a louder personality? 
yeah. as I peek both of our mics right I'm now. Like, yeah. I'm literally picking up in both of our mics. Um, do you feel equal even though I'm yeah. louder? You do? Mm -hmm. You don't ever feel less than because I'm so loud? No. I'm so good. I'm loud to like when I'm comfortable. Like I think people think or that I'm just. Or if somebody says my smile's weird or talk bad about me. Well, I think people think that I'm just uh, like you like tower over me all the time. And I'm like, I'm very loud around when I need to be. Yes. She's loud when she needs to be, ladies and gentlemen. And all you heresy hunters, she can't stand you. All right. What is some of the fun? Just so you guys know, all of you watching that make videos about me and how false I, I am, cannot. my wife can't stand you. She'll never like you. Ever. So if you're watching right now, just know that she doesn't like you more than any other human in, in existence. I just want you guys to know that so you feel better about how lame some of you are. Okay. What are some of the most challenging things you guys have faced as a couple? Our daughter being in the yeah. ICU. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. What are the challenges? I don't really know. I think a lot of them are more private or more like family yeah. things that we don't want to put people out and stuff. It would just be weird to start telling you guys all the stuff our family's been through. Okay. What do you do if you don't trust your spouse? Oh. Mm. Y'all need to pray together. Yeah. That's hard. I don't even know. What do you do? Trust is the know. foundation of a marriage. I'm not trying to be preachy, but I don't know what you would do if you can't trust your spouse. That's a really hard. I think you need to go to uh, prayer together, reading the Bible together, marriage and marriage counseling, counseling for yeah. sure. Marriage counseling. Listen, guys, do not despise marriage counseling. Getting a third person, not even a professional counselor, just a person that's unfiltered, unbiased to sit with and share your problems with and just talk it out with a third person is vital. So... Do not despise marriage counseling. If someone mm -hmm. at your church is willing to counsel you and sit with you, they don't have to be licensed. They don't have to be skilled. Just a third person that has a good marriage that will listen yeah. to you is... Because a lot of married couples I talk to that have issues, they just need someone to talk to. So, yeah. Um, what do you all do when your heart doesn't agree with the teaching at your church because the Lord has shown you it's heresy and doesn't line up with his word? Go find a new church. Never happened. Go find a new church. Yeah. yeah. Do not be in a church where you, you think it's heresy what's being preached because you'll just cause division. They're going to be... Just go find a new church, period. How do you stay so slim after four babies? Ha, 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 ha. Uh, What's your secrets? Ha, I ha, don't six have times. any secrets. How do you stay so slim after four kids? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm like this. <laughs> I'm letting her talk, guys. You guys are like, oh, Miko, I just read your comment. That was funny, your text. I'm letting um, her talk, so. I'm just, I, I can't say that I like work out all the time. I don't work out. You do all work the time. out a little bit though. Mm, very, very rarely. On your own home machines, though. You don't go yeah. to the gym. No. I, I don't have any advice for that. <laughs> okay. Someone said, What's for dinner tonight? Well, we don't know because we're going to be at the studio till late. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah, do you cut Alyssa's hair? I'm sorry. Isaiah, do you cut Alyssa's hair? No, it's Alyssa. Isaiah, do you cut I No, oh, it's my. Alyssa, do you cut Isaiah's Help hair? Oh, my Lord. I. <laughs> um, <you> can't even... <laughs> I can't stop saying my name first. <laughs> Alyssa, do you mm. cut Isaiah's hair and the girls or in the past? Because I know you, wait, or or have you in the past with your cosmetology background? I can't read right now. No, he goes to a barber shop every week. Yes. I cut what the else? girl's hair. You cut the girl's yeah. hair? Guys, I'm letting her talk, so be nice to me. I'm scared. I, Beltavar. Um, <laughs> how can we pray for you, Isaiah? I'm sorry. Every time, oh. every, every time I read the name Alyssa, I say Isaiah. Every, guys, the reason why we're laughing is when it says Alyssa, I keep saying Isaiah. How can we pray for you, Alyssa? Oh. Um. Uh. Oh, our wide angle died. <laughs> why are you laughing? Is the charger not plugged in? It's okay. I'm not, <laughs> I don't need it, Nico. It just died. Sorry, there's a lot the going on. The charger must not be plugged in. It's all good. It's all good. We'll fix Camera's it Camera's dying. Stevie's laughing. <laughs> Stevie, help her. Give her some tips. Stevie's behind the camera here. Give her tips. Patience. Um, Stevie knows how she... Stevie's like, Stevie, I got a whole list of pray things. For <laughs> pray for patience for her. Pray that she doesn't door dash anymore. Uh, uh, pray yeah. that she stands strong. Perseverance. Wow, these are good ones. It died? Um, it doesn't matter. We don't need it. All right, I let her talk. She's not talking, yeah. so I'm going to move on. Next question. How has the advent of your husband's YouTube presence impacted you personally? 
So what they're saying is- These are all for me, aren't they? Yeah, what they're saying wow. is, how has the fact that our YouTube has, our platform has been has grown so large so like in the last few years, how has that impacted you personally? Or has it, or has it not? Um, I don't think it's impacted me that personally. I mean, yes, when I come on and do things like this, or like when I'm messaging people like online and stuff, but our, our everyday life still looks, for the most part, the same. Like mentally, I'm still the same. Yeah, I feel, I feel the same. I still feel like I'm like 15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you handle finances in your marriage? I do the finances. He does it. I do all the finances. Nobody wants me doing the finances. Yeah. She's 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 never. I I'm, I see the look you're giving me. I'm using my work table. She's never. She. How do I say this? Hmm. Let me take a drink of water while I think. She doesn't like talking to random people on the phone. Oh, making phone calls? No. She doesn't like making phone calls, no. so she can't do the finances because she no. can't. Or basically, if she did the finances, we'd have no lights, no power, no water, <laughs> all that. It would just be her being like, I can't make the call. So I do the finances. <sighs> okay. When someone gets married and then the other one breaks up with them. Okay, hold on. Let's read this slowly. When someone gets married and then the other person breaks up with them, ruins their marriage, do you think, according to the Bible, it's okay for the one that got left to get married again. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes I do and I'm gonna tell you why. First Corinthians 7, 12 through 15. Now I'll speak to the rest of you though, I do not have a direct command from the Lord. If a fellow believer has a wife who is not a believer and she's willing to continue to live with him, he must not leave her. And then verse 13, if a believing woman has a husband who's not a believer and she is willing to continue to live with her, she must not leave him. And then verse 14, for the believing wife brings holiness to the marriage and the believing husband brings holiness to his marriage. Otherwise, your children would not be holy, but now they're holy. And then verse 15, but if the husband or wife who is not a believer insists on leaving, let them go. In such cases, the believing husband or wife is no longer bound for God has called you to live in peace. Okay, so if you get abandoned by your spouse, then you're no longer bound to the marriage. So if I'm a believer, my wife is not a believer and my wife leaves me, she says, I don't want to be with you anymore. And she abandons me. I'm no longer bound to the marriage. I can get remarried because I'm no longer attached to the marriage. So that's one way. Another way is through death. Once the person dies, the marriage contract is no longer bound. I'm just giving you this off the top of my head because I'm not going to do a whole teaching here. Sexual sin is a grounds for divorce. Matthew 19, 9. Mm -hmm. Whoever divorces his wife except for immor sexual immorality and marries another woman commits adultery, Matthew 5, 22. If anyone divorces his wife except for the grounds of sexual immorality, he commits adultery with the other person. So sexual immorality, abandonment, death. And then my last one, I'll add, this is not explicitly in the Bible, it's my own personal conviction, is abuse. Physical abuse, sexual abuse. I personally, yeah. this is not a scripture I could give you. I personally believe that physical abuse and probably even times verbal abuse is grounds for divorce. If your husband is physically abusing you, I say that is grounds to get a divorce before the eyes of God. I do not believe, and you guys can say, you're wrong Isaiah, wrong me all you want. This is my personal conviction. I don't believe that if your husband is physically abusing you that you have to stay with him for the sake of, well, we're married. So you yeah. guys can disagree, that's where I'm at. <clears throat> so death, you're no longer bound according to the book of Romans. Sexual sin, you have grounds for, um, for divorce. Your spouse leaving you, Paul says you're no longer bound to the marriage. And then number four, in my opinion, number four, I'm going to add, the other three are biblical. The number four is physical abuse. I do not believe God wants you to stay in a marriage where you're being physically abused, and you should probably call law enforcement as well. Okay? I think we're done. So let's give you guys a Good. few minutes. We're an hour and a half in, hour and 41 minutes. We're going to give you guys a few minutes to do live Q&A. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. There's a couple more. Um, how do I help my husband break free from his porn addiction? Go watch my hour and a half teaching on getting free from lust and my video on breaking porn pornography off your life and he needs to get deliverance and get help. Okay, do any of your children speak in tongues or, and are any of them baptized? No. no. They don't speak in tongues yet and they're not baptized and we pray with our kids every night. We pray yeah. with them every day that God will fill them with the Holy Spirit. We pray in tongues around them all the time and we ask them every night, do they have any prayer requests? All that stuff. But our big thing is, and for me personally, and you could say yeah. if I'm wrong, is I don't want to force my kids to do anything. So I'm not going to force them to speak in tongues. I'm not going to force them to get baptized. We had a girl around Justice's age. She's about to be nine getting baptized a couple weeks ago. And I told Justice, hey, that little girl's getting baptized. You should think about getting baptized. You should pray about it. And when my daughter decides, hey, dad, because we yeah. baptize at our church every single Sunday, every single service. So every week someone gets baptized. And when my daughter decides, I want to get baptized, 
I want to do this, then she's going to be able to do it. But I'm not going to force her to get baptized because if we force our kid to get baptized, they don't know what it means. It doesn't matter. We're not Catholic. Yeah. We don't baptize babies. And so I want my daughter to get to a place where she says, I want to be baptized. Yep. I want to be, I want to speak in tongues, get full of the spirit until then we'll keep praying that God fill them the Holy spirit. They hear tongues and when they're ready, they'll get baptized, but we don't want to force them to get baptized. Yep. Okay. Alyssa, do you ever feel overwhelmed being a mother of four? I feel like I can't keep up sometimes. Yeah. A lot of times. Yes. It's very, it's, it's overwhelming. I think one kid's overwhelming Two. I mean, it's just being a mom and staying home is an overwhelming feeling that nobody ever, you know, you can't be prepared for. So yes, Alyssa gets overwhelmed. I get overwhelmed. I was going to say, now that you've been Spoiler home more, alert. do you feel overwhelmed sometimes? Uh, I, I feel lately because of summertime, the kids are home all yeah. day overwhelmed at the work I have to do. Yeah. And and the moment I go in my office, they're knocking at my door and be like, Daddy, come play with me. Daddy, I need you to do this. And I'm like, go to your mom. I'm constantly being like, go to your mom. Yeah. So I, I felt overwhelmed with trying to work and do what I need to do to keep everything going mm -hmm. that we're doing while the kids are home and wanting me and I feel bad because they're knocking yeah. at my door. But then I'm like, no, I have to get work done. Like I literally have to do this. And so that's what overwhelms me a little bit sometimes, but, but not really. I think the most overwhelming part of having four or five or however many you have is wanting to give that quality time to each of them. Yes. And I constantly feel like I'm stuck doing the dishes, you know, for an hour. And then I'm like, oh, I should have been coloring or should have been doing all these things. So I think that is the overwhelming of like, was I nice enough? Did I do this? And yeah, am yeah. I ruining them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all Honestly. feel that way. We all, well, we don't all, but sometimes you're like, am I raising them right? Am I, I don't yeah. want to ruin my kids. I don't want them to get older and then I did something wrong. And I think every, should I say, good parent has yeah. those thoughts and feelings. And those are like the innermost thoughts you have of like, man, I want to raise them right. Am I doing enough? And I need to do more and I'm trying and all that stuff. So uh, why weren't you on the Demon Slayer wife stream? She was out of town. Oh, yeah. They asked me to be. I was yeah, just, we were was camping. We were for, camping. We were gone. I don't know. Okay. We're days. taking live Q&A. You guys are already freezing my chat. That's all good, though. Let's see. What do you think? Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm reading. I'm trying to read it's, guys' they're questions. They're so fast. Yeah, related to like our at? marriage and us, not questions about oh. like just for me. So guys, keep the questions related to what you want us to answer. You have her here. It's not often she comes on here. So ask questions related to both of us. Someone said buy a dishwasher. We have one. Uh, Alyssa's skincare oh, yeah. routine. What's your skincare routine? Mm -hmm. um, I recently got a bunch of the Tula stuff, and I love that. So I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, oh, Tula. Yeah. Get your Tula, girls. Slow mode, please. Uh, we forgot to put on slow mode, and it's too late now. So we're going to do fast mode. Go into detail why the girls what don't watch What kind of Barbie. cartoons do you let oh. your kids watch? It's not, we don't really like say, oh, you guys can watch these. We just monitor what they watch and make sure before we say like what they can watch, we know what it's about. So like, I think there's a show they like watching like the bread barbershop where it's like food that talks. And then we like obviously VeggieTales, the super book. Those are obvious. But if we, if we see them watching Coca something Melon, and something weird comes day. up. Well, yeah, now, but she's kind of, she got, Nova's out of Kokomo and kind of a little bit. She still watches it. Yeah, a little bit. But I'm talking about like the other kids. Oh. Yeah, uh -oh. not like Kokomo. And, but if they are watching something that's, something comes up in it, we're just like, you can't watch it anymore. So we, it's hard to explain. We don't have like a list, but we just monitor closely what they want to know why you don't like Barbie. Oh, Barbie's terrible. The Barbie show for kids is all about boyfriends, dating. Like it's a kid show and it's all about, boyfriends and that guy likes me and kids should not be watching anything with boyfriends and liking when they're like six and five and four there's no yeah barbie's terrible um so yeah that's that and yeah angel studios there's a bunch of christian shows too that are good we downloaded was that thing like fish something it's like a christian Minnow. netflix so yeah we try to have them on there kokomo and sensory overload i agree it is it's every four seconds they change i've recently been reading about how I think this last week, Cocomelon is like sensory overload because they keep changing the scene. So we got to look into that. We'll see. Mm. But actually, the last few days, Nova's not been wanting to watch Cocomelon. So maybe she's out of it. Cocomelon's like a zero to one thing. And our kids are kind of getting over that. Um, do you guys have any tattoos? I have I zero. Do. Alyssa has one. You want to show me your tattoo? <laughs> From uh, when I it's was a 16. a huge one. Oh, I, which way do I go? Right there. There we go. What does it say? It says love. Oh. She has a love tattoo, but... No more tattoos. No more tattoos. Um, okay. This is a, how old are you guys? You, how old are you? I think I'm 32. Yeah. I just turned 31. 31. Cooking stream in the future. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Do you see? Did you? I went to see Z. Okay, thank you. I saw Z at KMF. Thank you. <laughs> What's your guy? <laughs> are y'all prepping for society collapse? Yes, we are prepping. We're prepping in prayer, fasting, and the word. That's what the Bible says to do. So we're praying. We're being sober and watching. Oh. My nephew loves Gokamelon. View on women preaching. I have no problem with women preaching. Women prophesied in the Bible. So if they could prophesy in the book of Acts, then they can preach. Um, there was one thing that I keep missing. When are you guys coming to Stockton again? Well, we go to church in Stockton every week, but we've been out of town traveling and preaching, but we will be preaching there hopefully soon. When is your tongue getting clipped? Uh, I don't know yet. Oh, I haven't. I've been too busy to, to do that. Maybe I'll just go to the garage and cut it myself. Oh, oh, no. How do you do guys that. spend idle time just with being with Ew. our kids? Ew. Okay. I'm trying to read these, but when we interview your brother, whenever he wants, he already Ooh. knows. First, he if needs a laugh cam. you go back to the first few episodes, <laughs> he doesn't want the laugh cam. We already told him. You don't want one, Nico? He doesn't want one. He said he'll take away from the mystery. No. Oh, the, the miss. Oh, mystery. <laughs> okay. Why does he have to have his tongue clip? Because I have this. <laughs> I have a big tongue tie. Why are you guys laughing? So, yeah. I have a big tongue tie. Look. Oops. Oh, don't show it. Don't show it. I have a big don't tongue tie. Show that needs it. To be clipped. We need to cut it. Stop. Okay. Oh. You guys listen to worldly songs? No. Um, no. We do our best not to. Let's see. Is that a vice president cackling in the background? What does that mean? What? So, what does that even mean? Some of your guys' comments, I literally, <laughs> I can't even. What is a vice president? Is that like my vice president? I've been no, to Israel, no. He made his wife mad. I don't know why. Wasn't it clipped as a baby? No, it wasn't. They didn't even know what it was when I was a baby. I didn't even find out what it was oh, until I was 32. Hurts. So I've been 30 years without even knowing I had a tongue tie. Okay. Question. I'm trying to read all the questions, guys. Please limit it to questions right now. Is Nico married? Yes, his wife is sitting right here She's pouting laughing. at whoever said he's the vice president. <laughs> they called her Kamala. Oh. He keeps freezing. Sorry. She's about to have cold. a baby. Any day now. Isaiah's Can, we, need a, we need to post the vi the thing. Oh, yeah. The me video. Uh, we are going to do the newlywed game right now, but we forgot our boards and we didn't get the mic set up and we had a lot of... We were, we were running late. Let's just put it that way. What is the most irritating thing Isaiah does that you don't like? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, um, what do I do that irritates you? I have a huge list that I'm going to say about you. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just kidding. I don't have anything. You don't have anything. <laughs> Uh, Besides my dry lips right now, what else? That's a good note that's taking you that long. Probably just when we want you to get up sometimes. Waking you up, don't. sleeping yeah. in. <laughs> Hashtag exposed. She goes, go tell your dad to get up. And the kid's like, mommy wants yeah. you to wake up. Well, <laughs> actually, actually, they told me today, they're like, we don't like when daddy sleeps in. Yeah, I've been sleeping in because I've been up late. I wonder why. Hmm, I'm just kidding. Um, Okay. <laughs> Uh, that wasn't like a weird reference. I was just, I've been doing stuff because I either do it in the day or I do it at night. Do y'all baptize? Yes, we do. We baptize every single week. I just said that. Thank you. It's okay to keep long hair. I'm a guy. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I haven't gotten into the whole scriptural of a man shouldn't have long hair. Do you girls want to see the Barbie movie? No, they will not be seeing the Barbie movie. If we don't let them watch the cartoon Barbie show, they're definitely not seeing the Barbie movie. I don't even think adults. It's an adult movie. Yeah, you, adults shouldn't even be watching the Barbie movie, okay? No. Dream vacation destination as a family. What's your dream vacation like as Probably a family? Probably Hawaii. Really? We've been there, though. Again? I know, and I loved it. There's no other place? Where I want to go somewhere go? super exotic that has, like, the craziest clear white beaches and like oh yeah like crazy exotic but i don't know yeah. where that's at. That would, that wherever you nice. are we want to go where you are do you play with Bora, your kids Bora. often yeah. yes there's nobody in this broadcast that plays with their kids more than me okay <laughs> not even nico all right <laughs> thoughts on elementals movie for kids i don't know what that is <sighs> you listen to worldly music no we don't will you ever consider a bromance oh yeah i got a bunch of bromances canada's exotic <laughs> what would be your dream cruise? We would never go on a cruise never. and be stuck on a boat. We've I don't seen... do the ocean. Just, I just don't go like... on the internet and you'll find a million clips of storms and I stuff don't care like how nice the boat is. I'm not going to be on the ocean. Alyssa, what version of the Bible did you read? Uh, It was NLT. NLT. I do like the NLT. And all of you that are like, eh, 
New King James only. This is not the right channel for you. All right. Puerto Rico's beautiful beaches. Yes. Yes. That's oh, yeah. the right direction. Somewhere like Puerto Rico. Or like where you stay in the little beach thing on the water. Yes. Yeah. Let's do the that little would, bungalow. We could do that. Come on now. That's what it's called. Is it sinful that to not want kids? No. It's not sinful. If you can't, if you if you're going to have kids and neglect them, you should not have kids. Some of you out here, you should not have, be having kids. All right. Does your children watch the Miss Ashley show? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that nope, is. No, they don't watch Miss Ashley because we don't know what it is. Modesty on the beach. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, where's the comment? Well, okay. We don't oh. really, we rarely go to the beach. The last time we went to the beach, I was like, are we in Sodom and Gomorrah? Because well, I didn't know I like, now I that. I don't wear a bikini if that's what we, they're asking. Basically, the last time we went to the beach, I hadn't been to the beach in a year. But we, okay, let me rephrase this. The SoCal beaches are different than NorCal beaches. Yeah. Our beaches out here, like Santa Cruz, it's not that is, bad. Is pretty modest. We went to a SoCal beach. That was my first time going to a beach in Southern California. And I pretty much, this was me at the beach. Yeah. yeah this is great. I love the waves. This is great. I'm having a great time because I kid you not, there was, how old do you think all these the girls were that were just everywhere? Young. Probably like 15 and 16. Yeah. Maybe and even we, younger. We, we didn't know. And I just, I hate saying this because it sounds kind of like, it sounds sexual, but it's the truth. We didn't know that like thong bikinis were what everyone wears now. I'm like, uh, Everybody. Yeah. so yeah, me and we were with friends of ours and me and the guy were pretty much either staring right at the water the whole time or we were looking down because all around us was a bunch of teenage thongers yeah. running around. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do because there's just, it was just not good. There was just thongers everywhere. And I'm like, we can't be, <laughs> it's not good. All right. Um, speak on your first time speaking in tongues. My first time was at the altar the night I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. What was your first time, first time speaking in tongues? Do you remember? It was one of the prayer meetings when we, uh, we were all praying for it. I had like three people around me. And you got tongues? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, prayer meeting. So yes, there was lots of thongers at the beach. Everyone's typing thongers in the chat now. I can't even read. <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Isaiah Thongover, no, we're not doing that. We are not doing that. Um, I didn't know that that was like the thing now. I guess SoCal is just, it's just different. It's a different culture than here. But in Santa Cruz, we go to a hotel that has like a little private beach. We're so bougie, we go to the private beach. No, it's like, an, it's a little hotel on the beach. Usually that's where we go by the boardwalk, but it's not the main Santa Cruz beach. So yeah. we don't go where all the peasants are on the main beach. We go to the private, I'm kidding about the peasants, but you guys aren't laughing. You guys have to laugh, so I feel oh, like, it's yeah, like, yeah, like laugh. Really <laughs> <fun here. laughs> um, we go to like the hotel beach that's like, there's no one on it. So we don't have the, the thongers everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Do your kids watch phones? No, they don't have phones. No. We gave our daughter a phone that had no Wi-Fi, no signal, no nothing for a few days. And we took it away because she wanted to take it everywhere. And I'm like, no, you're not going to be eight with a phone. You could have, no. Um, what's, I don't know what that word is. What's the longest? Does that say you farted? We've never farted in front of each other ever. Dong bikinis are in style. Yeah, we, I found that out. I found that out, and I had a beautiful time looking at the sand. Okay. <laughs> now every single... Okay, guys, come on. Let's move ask on. Ask questions. No more, th no more thongers. All right, just ask questions now. The no-tell motel. Yeah, I won't tell you where it's at. We don't want you guys blown up the spot. You know what I mean? Was Outer Darkness Matthew talking about hell? Kind of. It was a joke. We get it. Yes, yes, yes. It was a joke. We're done. Let's move on. Ask does Isaiah usually speak first? I don't know what that means. Where at? Uh, okay. What was... Type a Q so we know it's a question. What was the marriage expectations that you had before versus the reality <laughs> of it? What were the marriage expectations you had? Um, I was going to put my clothes be on. Real? I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, don't expose me too hard. Oh. Don't, don't like, you know, throw me into the bus and drive over me. But yeah, what was an expectation you had that wasn't wasn't true i thought that i don't want you to be fake if that's what you're asking like do you want me yeah. to be real i just thought that you weren't like affectionate because we weren't married so in my mind i thought like holding hands and what and are you stuff. when we talk about affectionate outside we have four kids. of like outside of like our house okay like you would hold my hand things like that i didn't know that that wasn't how you were as a person yes not like a marriage thing yeah so, so that was hard for me because in my head, I'm like, oh, it's going to change when we get married. And which just it just in my favor, just to help myself a little bit. 
it's actually very common for guys to not want to be affectionate in public or like it's not uncommon. There's a lot of guys that are really like, yes, yes. Do you have to s statistics? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of guys that don't aren't comfortable being affectionate like oh. in public and stuff. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We're ho we're holding hands more. What was in the your car. What was yours? Her parents. Obviously, our parents shape our view of marriage. Like yeah. that's the bottom line. No one can say that's wrong. Yeah. Her parents are very affectionate around people and in public, and not, that's not bad at all. And yeah. my parents weren't. And so me, I mean, again, I have to reiterate, we're very affectionate outside of yeah, being in public. It, yeah. I have to keep saying we have four kids, you know, and that's a whole other story I won't go into and make you blush. But in public, yeah, to me, it's like I consider it like PDA and she considers it. And this is our marriage counseling starting. Yeah. Now, <laughs> she considers it like, no, it's not PDA. It's just being affectionate. And me, I'm like oh, holding hands, kissing in public. It just feels weird to me. And she's more like, it shows that we're... It shows that you love me. Yeah. Yeah. Are your kids homeschooled? So our kids... So yeah, all the guys out there, I'm with you. All the guys out there... Oh man, I'm saying the wrong thing. All Everyone is asking about homeschool. Our kids go to our friend's church. I don't want to leak it. Yeah, right? I'm please. supposed to like not talk about it. But it's a very... Let's just say this. There's how many kids in the whole school from kindergarten through I high school? I think like 17. Okay, 17 kids from kindergarten through high school. They do homeschool curriculum at the church. So they're not homeschooled theoretically, but they do a homeschool style. Yeah. They do a homeschool <laughs> curriculum at our friend's church, <clears throat> spirit filled, amazing church. We love it. I wish I could shout it out, but please don't. She tells me not to. So we love it. But yeah, they're, they're in a small Christian school. Yes. Homeschool curriculum. Praise the Lord. See people in the chat and kissing in public, holding hands in public is weird. Holding hands 100%. So, yeah, there is people on my side. It's okay, though, if you don't agree with them or me, but that's just the str a struggle I've always had. But I'm working on it. I don't know what the Sound of Freedom movie is. I'll look into it. Um, let's see. How should we go about meeting women who believe... Who believe... For, wait. How should I go about meeting women who believe for a relationship? I don't know what that means. How do I go meeting women? Church is a good place to meet them. I I... Oh, they're going to get mad when I say this. It's 2023. I don't think there's anything wrong with going to a... Don't... Everyone in this room, don't cringe at me right now and be like, eh, I don't man. know what you're going to say. Don't laugh at me. Don't make any remarks. I think Stevie... I don't think there's anything wrong in 2023 of going to a Christian dating site. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, if you're a Christian trying to find someone... you Okay, I thought I was going to cringe. Everyone's cool. All right. I think a Christian dating site, if you're looking to... You should be dating a Christian and marrying a Christian. And if there's no one at your church... It's 2023. Like, Go to a Christian you dating yeah. site. You're an adult. You're 30. It's time. Your biological clock is ticking. Does Alyssa cook? Yeah. Yes. When I have to. I'm I honestly starving right now. Lately, I've been cooking a lot. I'm supposed to record videos after this, but I'm, I'm so hungry. Okay. Did you guys see The Little Mermaid? No, we will not be seeing no. The Little the Leviathan. I mean The Little Mermaid. <laughs> right. We will not be watching that. Isaiah Cringe Devar. I don't know what that means. I'm scared. Can y'all do backflips? I can on a trampoline, and actually, you can too. She used to be a cheerleader. You know, you for sure could do a backflip. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of my. She used to be a flyer in high school. She was the girl they would throw up in the air, and then you see the videos of them missing, and the girl falling, and then <laughs> being crippled. But yeah, she weren't you the one they threw up? Yeah, she was a flyer. I mean, it's been a a, a lot of years though. She did she did competition level competitive. state competitive, going every day to somewhere cheerleading, throwing up in the air, and traveling around the, everywhere. And when I met her, her parents had a picture of her the size of a wall. So she was like, They're proud she of was me. a cheerleader. She was a cheerleader. <laughs> she literally had a picture of her in a cheerleading outfit the size of a wall. I'm not kidding. Shout they out to that me. picture. But will our kids be doing cheerleading? 150% no. Never. Not in a million years. She yeah. did it, but yeah, our kids will never be doing it. That was before she was saved. What age for a phone when our kids are driving? Oh, that's a good one. When they're driving, they could have a phone. If they're not driving, they don't need a phone. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. What do you think about that? Am I wrong? Right or no, wrong? I, yeah. We're strong. There's no reason your kids need to be on the internet talking to people. Why, why do they need a phone? I don't understand. All right. Is Alyssa planning on preaching right now? No. no but she can preach and teach really well. She did it before in our, in our I did uh, it one staff. Time. Our one time. Core leadership of our old church. And it was amazing. Um, Who's a better driver? <laughs> we're not even going to go there. We're not even going to start with that. <laughs> I don't want to even start. How tall are you guys? I'm six foot. I'm five two. Actually, I'm not six foot. I'm five eleven and oh, you're six foot. five fifth. How many no. inches are there? Nico in a foot? says you're six I'm foot. You're 12? six foot. Because I'm five ten. How many inches are in a foot? Twelve. I'm five eleven and eleven twelfths. <laughs> what? 
Yep. That's where I'm at. I think I said that wrong, but it's somewhere there. Okay. <sighs> Between you two, what, whose personalities do your daughters have? They all Just, have mine. E uh... Justice is a lot like me. She just likes. They're all mixed. Which is weird because they're, you know, obviously they're from both of us. Justice is definitely like very outgoing like you. Yeah, they're, 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 they're a mix. All right. Thoughts on Disneyland for kids. We're not going to talk about that either. We don't talk about <laughs> Disneyland or driving or both of them together. What's your most embarrassing moment? Um, I don't know. I don't have one, I don't think. I'm sure you have one. I can't think of it. Are you, is Alyssa planning on preaching no? And if, why not? Because she doesn't feel God calling her to. That's why. Super simple. <laughs> we love you, Jenny. Jenny Weaver in the chat. We're at the end Hi, of our Jenny. thing. Doing our, now we're doing live kinet. We've already done all the other ones. I thought it was going to take us four hours to get through those. What time is really it right good. now? It's 8.15. We've been almost two hours. We're going to get off soon because we're starving. And it's I love here. how a two hour stream is like short. We're like, oh, we're only doing two hours. Do you plan on driving to Disneyland? We're not going to Disneyland. Or as I affectionately call it, Demon Land. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to read these, but they go don't, so fast. Don't let your kids tell the dentist. My dad doesn't let us go to Demon Land because it'll be awkward. <laughs> it, it would be really awkward if your kids told the dentist that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Thoughts on darting? I think you mean dating unbelievers. Do not date an unbeliever. Trust me. Do not date an unbeliever. Jenny said, y'all are still on. Yeah, two hours later, we're still what here. What attracted you to Hey, me. we only get her once every few months, so we have, to, we, have to, we have to milk it when she's on. What attracted me to you is your love for God and your physical appearance. That's a good answer, huh? Yeah. Um, I don't... Yeah, anyways. What? Okay. Say it. <laughs> Alyssa, who do you watch on YouTube during your free time? She I don't watch, watch YouTube. YouTube. She doesn't watch I used, anything on I, any. Yeah, I got, I can't watch it because I saw all the. She watches. The well, no, we're not talking people. about that. We're I know, I'm just, just saying YouTube. I don't go on YouTube because I. We don't allow her to watch to YouTube watch. or go in comment sections. But she does like watching <laughs> the mom. She does like watching the moms that are like Costco finds of the week. You oh, won't yeah. believe I found for $13.99 right now in Costco. And she likes yeah. watching those. And she likes watching the moms organize. And she likes watching the fake pranks that she thinks are real sometimes. Sometimes uh, that the, they're of real. Of the married couples pranking each other. We're yeah. like hitting the ball and it comes down and, and she thinks they're real. And I'm like, this is the fakest thing I've ever seen. How do you split household chores? We just all pitch in and do. Yeah. We all got to clean. We all, we all do it together. No one has a choice. Okay. Um, COVID. Okay, we can't talk about the Fauci ouchie because we'll get banned. All right. <laughs> Should we talk politics? No, we don't. We don't care about we politics or the Fauci ouchie. We're not the ones. Have you been taken to heaven? Not that I know of. I mean, maybe in a vision or something. <laughs> there's now, there's now a stake and shake in Stockton. Don't lie to me. No, don't lie not. to me. I just googled it and the don't lie to me. Nevada. Don't do this to me, Jorge. So he's lying. I will drive to your house and TP your house tonight. Don't <laughs> lie. There is not a steak and shake. And if there is, I will drive there right now. And I live an hour away from Stockton. I'll drive there right now. Don't even lie to me. Okay, we're almost done. We're going to take a few more because we've been live for over two hours. Oh, yeah. If you guys want to sew into the podcast tonight and the broadcast, you guys can give. Let's put that on screen. Help us pay for this $11,000 AC unit. It's a joke, but it really, we really do have to pay $11,000 on Wednesday. I'm not joking. <laughs> So there you go. Scan the QR code. Help us because we're sweating. I look like a glazed donut. I look like a ginger bacon it cheeseburger. Hot in here. We have a window AC unit right now blowing in here with walls trying to get it. Anyways, our AC unit's out. If you're if you're blessed by the stream, so thank you. I appreciate you guys. What? Yeah, no, what? you guys, why do you do that to me? There's not a steak and shake. I Googled it when we went to Washington and it said the closest one was Nevada. What's a good age to get married? 16. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Gosh. I would say an ideal age to get married. <laughs> In my opinion, 16. you should have your light. You, listen, hold on, hold on. No, no, I'm not 16. Well, I mean, back in the day. You should have your license. You should, hold, what? I'm trying to talk. You're laughing at the wrong times. You should have your license. At, I was even going to tell you jokes on stream here, but we don't have time. Uh, tell me a joke. No, I'm hungry. Come on. At 16, we well, already laughed enough. At 16, you should have your license and a job. At 18... You should be graduated yeah, high school. Yeah, we're very big on Dumpy. You should be 
19 Lazy. or 20, you should be getting married. We got married. At, I was 21. She was 20. 21 it 21 ish 22 ish somebody said you're 100 percent about to get canceled 23 i don't care 23 ish <laughs> is a good time to get married 20 to 23 is a good time to get but, married i mean if you're different. still at mom and dad's at 25 with no job uh, then we need to <laughs> with no Stevie. job with no nothing <laughs> okay we need to guys i'm only talking to the guys here i'm trying to escape nico guys <laughs> Guys, <laughs> listen, guys. <laughs> guys, you need to be out. You need to be out Somebody winning. Somebody said I better get going. Bread winning. My daughters, I told them they can live with me as their whole lives. My daughters, they can live with me until they're 50. But if you're a man, you need to be out. Get a job. Get a license. Get your life together. Do something for God. Do not be 25 with no job playing video games in your mom's house eight hours a day. Thank you. Amen. Good word, Amen. Isaiah. Um, do you find Christian rap worldly? No. Would you guys eat bugs for money? Would you guys no. eat bugs for money? Yes. No. Yes, absolutely. You're I'll eat a centipede right now for 11000 Yes. Are you kidding me? I'll eat bugs for money. How much? I would much? never. How much? I got you. I no. got to buy AC on Wednesday. It's not Does worth Sid it. Older I'd rather person? have no AC. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. Rent is expensive. I'll eat bugs right now on stream. You're... I say you're lying. Will you let your kids do ballet? Our daughter did ballet for one year and didn't want to do it anymore. So, yeah. But we don't mind. Ballet is different than... than dancing and hip-hop and cheerleading the fact like we went to her ballet recital and the fact that there was like four-year-olds and five-year-olds doing hip-hop dancing shaking everything was mind-blowing to me i literally was like where's cps where i felt like it was illegal to watch some of the dances so yeah there's that okay that's a whole nother rant i won't go on have you seen angels um i think so what artists do you listen to the most probably i don't know I just play a mix of like like songs. Probably Jordan May. I don't know. It's a playlist, so it has a bunch of songs. What are y'all view on the rapture? I don't think she even knows the different views <laughs> of the rapture. She just knows that Jesus is coming to take us. My view is post-trib. I do believe we'll be here for the tribulation. And I have videos on why I believe that. Eat bugs like John the Baptist. I'm not going to re-answer questions if you're like, he's not answering my question because we already answered in the last two hours. Okay? We're getting ready to end. Um, anything else before we end you want to say? The giving link's there. Will you be on stream more? Uh, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe. She doesn't really like, let's be honest, she doesn't like you guys that much. I mean, it's not a big deal. No, I love it's, the people, no, but I love deal. being in the comments. Be, just kidding. I like being in the comments. Yeah, no, we like, we like uh, you what guys. You guys are awesome. All right. Somebody's asking about my nose. Are you a morning or night person? I'm a night person. She's a morning person. I hate in the morning. She doesn't. Well, she kind of likes the nights, but I'm getting hungry. I'm supposed to be recording videos tonight, and this always happens where it gets late, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to record. Maybe this weekend I'll, you guys could have a break. All right, I love you guys. Do, I appreciate you guys. Anything else you want to say before we, I was we just do the say, ending do screen? People even, do people like these Q&A ones? Do you guys like the Q&As? Let us know in the chat. I mean, we, had tw we peaked at 2,800, which is mm. good on a Friday night. Friday night is hard to break 2,000. Favorite ice cream? Last question. I'm not a big ice cream person. Um, I don't, I don't, I'd probably I, do like Rocky honestly, Road. Honestly, right now, anything sounds good. We need Carl. I got you. Isaiah would choose. What would you choose? <laughs> the only one that will ever come between like, our marriage is Carl. Are you putting it on me again? He's the only one that will come between our marriage. And if you're not nice to him, he's going to go in front of you. Oh my gosh. Yes. They love the Q and A's. They love them. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they humanize us. Some people do after watching these are like, I hated you before, but now I love you. Cause now you're like human to me. I'm like, Oh, yeah. thanks. Appreciate you. Alyssa's having a great time once she's on. It's just starting is the, is the part where she's Very, anxious. Yeah. Um, my daughter wants to know if you would take your daughters to Peppa Pig World. I have no problem with Peppa Pig World. Where it's is in, that uh, Orlando, Florida. Yeah, I have no problem. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going to Peppa Pig World as long as we don't have to have like a magic wand to get in. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> Which, by the way, the last place we went, the water park place, that was like yeah. that. They were like trying to give the kids wands. Oh, yeah. It's just weird and cringe. We love you guys. If you want to give, help us out with our ministry monthly partner. Our monthly partner links are in the description. They're also in the comments. Pray about becoming a monthly partner YouTube member. You can give on the QR code. It does help. Again, we have to replace this AC. It's it's bottom line. There's no getting around it. The AC here is 25 years old, so it needs a new one. We're sweating as I speak, and we have a window unit going the whole time. <laughs> That's what you've heard in the background. It's all good. We'd rather not be sweating. We love you guys. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys on Monday night for our teaching. And yeah, thank you guys. We should have new videos this weekend. We'll see.
God Maybe. <laughs> you could do uh, stop recording and stream ending and we'll just kind of chill on the stream ending screen. Kind of tradition, we have to have the stream ending. So here we go. Praise the Lord. It's somewhere here. Uh, I have it. No, do you have it? Oh, no, it's right here. It's right here. Oh, wow. wait. Yeah, we, Hold on. What? Angle okay. So I don't know if it'll work. So we're going to try stream ending. Hold on. If not, yeah, is it on? Okay, hold on. There, oh, we, there go. we go. Yes. Stream ending. Okay, Hello. Bye, everybody. Love you guys. <laughs> Goodbye. We love you guys. Oh, wait. We're muted probably now. Oh. Let's see. Maybe you can just turn it down a little bit. All right, we love you guys. Stream ending. What do you guys think about the wide angle? I don't know. It's a little bit. I like a, the wide it's angle. It's a little closer now. We changed the really? lens, so it's not as zoomed out. But I think it's kind of cool. You guys could see my the same our jeans shoes. I wear only black jeans and our matching shoes. Look at our shoes. whole outfit is we're matching. Really matching. Let's get the bird off screen. Our whole we didn't mean to match, but we're totally like nineteen two thousands emo right now. <laughs> Yeah, we're matching, which is funny. And we're wearing black and white. Someone last time was I like, know. it's so cringe that you guys match colors. I'm like, you're so cringe. We don't even mean to. <laughs> How could you say that's cringe? You're, you're, you're just, you just, go get, go get a wife. That's all I have to say to you. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are accidentally matching. We didn't mean to. They said you're, I don't know what that means, but they said your fit is slay. What does slay oh. mean? Nice. Good. good. Slay's good. Love matching, wide angle. Yeah, oh, they this, like the matching. We could probably adjust the lens a little bit and come closer, but yeah. All right, let's see what else. All right, we love you guys. We're gonna probably break our three-day DoorDash right now because we're hungry and starving. Love you guys. <laughs> see you Monday night. Bye. Bye.